Sofía, ¿qué te pasa? the second to last episode of the Halloween episodes of Just Trish. It's I Dream of Trish today. And my co-host, uh, Moses? Are you Moses from the Bible? Or <laughs> are you a judge? I'm not the judge. Are you a see, judge? See, when you said you're going to be genie, I was like, okay, I didn't think of a television program. I thought, okay, genie, magic, wizard, sorcerer. So I was like, okay, period, Dumbledore tease, Lord of the Rings tease. Okay. Oh, very but Lord of the Rings. I was pretty gogged when I realized, yeah. And then I see you, and all of a sudden I got the vision. The, like, <laughs> wiggle, wiggle the nose, ding, whatever. I think that's bewitched. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I think it's so a genie. I still don't know it. Yeah, I don't oh. really either. I know she's, like, in her bottle, and I feel like there's, like, <laughs> controversy with that. I don't know either. I just, the first pink costume I thought of was, like, I dream a genie, but, like, I know nothing about it. Well, I mean, I feel like it's pretty on brand to be this uh, chaotic and unserious. And this um, is chaotic. Yeah. I love the chaos. Moses is an astronaut. You are Major Nelson, which, yes, do you know who you are? (laughs) (laughs) Moses is, it's from my dream of genie. I guess he was an astronaut. Like, it looks like he's like a commander in the Navy, but he's actually an astronaut. So did they find you in space? Yeah, I don't know. Because something we read, it said like he found her. Oh, he found the genie in space? So you're an alien, basically. No. Is that the backstory? We We should have. Googled it. Does it say what happens in the intro? I don't think so. It doesn't say like, ooh, she found I mean, <laughs> like, I, mean, I also wasn't listening to it. I just was like, Because Gilligan's Island will tell you mark. the whole tale. Uh, <laughs> They're like, let's sit right back in here. And you know everything. The, the, the Gilligan. We should have been Gilligan's Island. That would have been a that cute one. That would have been good. Who would you have been in? Do you know Gilligan's Island? Yes, I used to watch it all the time when I was little. Was it like Nick at Night or something? TV yeah, Land? Yeah. What did, who would you have been? Maybe Ginger. <laughs> You are so gender. I always loved. I thought the professor was hot. I think we would be uh, Thurston Howell and the wife. The, oh, that's the so rich, you guys. The bougie. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Have you seen Gilligan's Island? No. It's so American. I'm surprised you didn't watch it because you said you watched like Baywatch and stuff. Like I'm surprised. Baywatch. You didn't. <laughs> I mean, it showed in Israel, but Gilligan Island never showed in Israel. That's well, it was in the '60s, but for some reason, it showed here all <laughs> oh, the time. Oh, well, we like show night. old shows like us. Yeah, it takes us time to catch up. But Gilligan Island's like such an American show. I feel like people like I don't know like right. I knew Three's about Company. It. Oh, we could have been Three's Company. That would have been. I mean, literally, we can cosplay whenever. So I'm still buying costumes as if like Halloween's not ending. But... I love it. I know because you see so many cute ones. Like we went to Spirit Halloween, and like it was hard to find because we were looking for like they have. Why don't they have any pilots or stewardess? Like, they have no pilot costumes. I know. Which, like, they have almost every other occupation. Everything. Like, so. a boat captain and, <laughs> yeah. you know, military. They have everything. So, I'm wondering if it's, like, people were, like, impersonating flight attendants. <laughs> oh, my God. Because <laughs> that's weird. It used to be, unless I'm, like, making this up, but it used to be a really common costume. Like, stewardess and yeah. pilot. And even the pilot costume we had ordered on Amazon, it's taking, like, a month to get here. First, it's October 16th, which would have been fine for today. And then we looked it up yesterday. It's like, oh, October 31st. Now it's going to be here. And we're like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> And it was really obscure and it was expensive. And I was just like, that's so weird. They didn't have any of that. Yeah, you would think a pilot costume, I mean, I guess in a post, like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I like, don't know either. I was now like, my what? conspiracy theory hat's going on. Like, yeah, okay, conspiracy theory. <laughs> like, oh my God, coming for Shane's brand. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. You know, like, he's still, no shade, but do you know he still does conspiracy videos? I was I like, s- that's wild. I saw he did one recently with Jeffrey, I think. Oh, did they do one together? I think they did one together. I saw the thumbnail. I kind of live for that. I kind of love that he just keeps doing the same thing. I guess if you're so passionate about, because I think his whole podcast is conspiracy theories. Oh, is it? I think so. I think oh. he has one with like six co-hosts and no shade. It's just always funny to me. And I guess this is a me thing because obviously people like to be around people. Like when there's so many like co-hosts and people talking or multiple guests. Like to me, when there's four people talking at once, I'm like, oh my God, there's like a lot. And it's not just, like, it's, it's not shade to shame. Like so many podcasts do this. So many people have like yeah. extra guests. And it's like chaotic, like with three of us, like luckily Moses, he like doesn't, he doesn't care if he's talking or not. So it's not like, I feel like I have to talk to him, but you know, obviously he's my husband too. But like, if he was anyone else, I would feel like, oh, we have to like chime in and talk to him. And even, even being my husband, being like, knowing he doesn't care, I still am like, we need to, you know, it, it stresses me out. And that's why we have guests, so many people miss you. And I do too. And like, we've tried it before when there's guests, but there's like, I don't know, for me, it's like one-on-one time too. I like to just talk one-on-one. When there's multiple people, it's chaos. Like I love the Jeff and Tana episode and it was great and they're perfect, but it's like, it's chaos kind of you know what I mean because I'm like <laughs> yeah. okay there's an inside joke I don't get it and I think it's a me thing I think maybe I get more self-conscious when there's a group of people and I feel like I 
feel dumb around them or something. Yeah, I think it works for you. And you talk really fast too, which is like, I'm like so used to it, but it's funny when people say comments like, wow, Trisha talking fast is so good for my ADHD. Yeah. So I feel like that, if it was you talking fast with like six other people, it would just be a whole different kind of program. And I love talking. I love talking. So I think even just like in a group setting and anything, I just like always want to talk. You know what I mean? (laughs) And I think that's like why I wanted my podcast. And it's funny because with the solo podcast, I don't talk as much as when I'm like talking to someone. I don't know what it is. I think when I'm talking to someone, even at home, I just, I'm like talk so much. I don't know. I I like to dominate a conversation, but only when there's someone else involved. (laughs) If it's me by myself, I'm like, I don't know what to talk about. Like, you know, I don't know. It's weird. I guess because like, and you're such a good like listener. Like you're just like the best. You get it. Like I don't know. But when there's so many people talking, it just seems chaotic. I know. I don't know. It's I feel it works. Even like with the guest episodes, I don't know. Like you get so you just I said this before. Like you get so focused and like so in it, and you're so present. So I think if you had someone like in the corner busting like throwing things out there it would like take you out of it like yeah. you get you get into a good flow and you do your thing and i love it i love and i love interviews so much thank you i love them so much because it's like i make notes and i rarely ever look at the notes because like they go in, in such a different direction like all of a sudden they talk about something and i'm like oh i want to know more about that like you know i think it's so i don't know i love i love interviews so much they're so fun but i love to talk so much i love talking to people you know what it is i don't see people i don't have like friends by choice i think and so when i get this interaction or this interaction i'm like oh my god it's like my social hour you know what i mean it's like the one time a week i'm social and i like live for it and that's why i have like so much energy and i go 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 but um but i love that he just does conspiracy videos i just love someone who like do the same thing and still be successful people still watch but i'm like wow that's wild for me it's like i guess i still do mukbangs i don't know i'm trying to think of an equivalent of like what i did 10 years ago that i'm still doing i guess it's mukbangs in the car i don't know yeah, I guess drive through stuff too. Yeah. I saw that you did that you were on the hunt for the Squishmallows the other day. Did you end up getting the Happy Meal Squishmallows? No, I'm going to go back. I, I think when I – I guess I could do it today. I go – no, they said it was out the next day and I was so sad about it. But the letting the person pick in front of you is like kind of like in the algorithm right now because those are the really? only videos that get views. They get like 150,000 views when before I get like 10,000 views. So I just keep going and ordering the nasty food because everyone's like, you don't do this challenge because you don't like the, any other food besides nuggets. So every time I get something, I'm like, Bleh. But I try it. I try it. I tried the, they had a McChicken or something. It was nasty. It was not good. The mayonnaise. The mayonnaise. Mm-hmm. They really got me. I was just like, what? I just, the chicken patties themselves. It was just, my life revolves around food. So when I have a bad food experience, like when we dropped off the cards to you, we had the best food experience. Joey's in Woodland Hills. Oh, I knew you were going to go to Joey's. Oh my, I knew it. No, I've never been, but I know you love you it. You live so Brittany close not it. to dox you. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know, but you live Look in the Leah. area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh maybe we should cut that out i don't know no, it's um fine. okay uh no but you live so close to there and i got so excited so we were gonna drop off the cards the night the night before and go get dinner there but then you're like oh do it tomorrow in the morning so then we were but we had to go somewhere at 11 back here so i told i was like moses was like well let's just go at noon so we can go eat and he's just like but what, you should go before so i'm like no i want to eat and then i'm like it'll be fine but it's so good that place is so good i can't even been i know the kardashians they're all they're always filming there in their little show that's why we went mm-hmm. and then we got the truffle fries they're back now when we went the first time that's they weren't there where you got the truffle fries mm. okay. do you like truffle i do mm. yeah i don't like truffle i like truffle fries and truffle pasta i guess i like truffle i mean that's all i know from truffle and maybe like i think i've had like truffle pizza before Ooh, truffle pizza is good truffle's like expensive but it's like a mushroom and i'm yeah, like why is like it so the, expensive the pigs shout out to the pigs i think the pigs are the ones that find the truffles no i swear to god what do you mean they like sniff it out <laughs> they, yes they sniff them out and that's how farmers get the truffles i swear oh my god shout out pigs <laughs> also you with your hair right now i was gonna say i, I love live. Kind of living like yeah i just love like stroking my hair out like you can't tell me nothing like you look cool it feels amazing it's giving regina george it's giving that yeah, that's Marcia literally Brady. what I feel. I'm kind of forgetting I'm like a wizard and I'm like, I'm just that girl. You the, the look, costume, yeah, you, <laughs> the you costume like bag girl. said that girl. Yeah. You look like, I know, I think one day when Moses gets older, I want him to grow his hair out like that. Like when he gets like gray hair, because then he'll look like Moses from the Bible. You Period. know, yeah, it'll that look that so good. And then done. people will be like, you look like Moses, you know, yeah. and that's him. But you actually were supposed to be the blue genie. It just didn't come. You had it planned. Yeah. I mean, I guess we should out the gag. But out you the did gag. it. <laughs> Like, yeah. Trisha, wow, like you couldn't help him out because, like, I do love to plan a costume. And let me tell you, there's so many costumes. We have like 30 costumes this year. I have like two with my daughter, and then our 
you know, group costumes there. It's it's a lot. I've been trying to figure it out. I was gonna yes, I was gonna be the blue genie, but he wears a turban, so I felt like that's kind of problematic. But I was oh. just gonna like not wear the turban and I... be blue. But then I was like, I'm mm, blue bodysuit. Like let me let me think, you know, something a little bit more retro, cuter. And then that's when I looked up the retro milkman costume, and I was like, that's kind of like cute. That's like a cute little. Oh, I you see. Know. So you were gonna switch. Yeah, but that's that didn't come in time. Gosh. So are we're genies gonna... offensive? I wonder that. Is that like a it was like, he had a weird name when I looked it up and it seemed a little... The Blue Genie? Yeah, because it wasn't Blue Genie. It was like a different name. And I feel like then it kind of got a little... I kind of thought that too. I'm like, I don't know. Like, I think because they still sell like Aladdin house. Like this one was like a straight up like turban with a feather in it. And I was like, that oh, seems... Yeah. I felt like the Disney Genie one with like the face and stuff like that. But then you yeah. can see your face. Because <laughs> yeah. I thought about that. I was like, that would be kind of cute too. But I don't know. I just wanted to be pink. And then I didn't really think about like other people coordinating <laughs> costumes. Because I was even with him. I was like, I don't know. What are we going to wear? <laughs> It's very complicated. It's... But our, our finale costume, I'm really excited about. Like, that's going to be cute. Yes. So, yeah. I, I hope. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got the costumes, and they look cute, but, like, maybe a little cheap. But I guess all <laughs> Halloween costumes are cheap. It's camp. It's camp. Yeah. But yes. We love mm-hmm. a camp moment. <laughs> it, you you are the definition of camp. So. Uh, are you comfortable in that outfit? Do you look good? I am. It's okay. loose. It looks like, great. I love the hair. Like, just the hair. sitting and play with my hair is, like, really nice. So. I love it. Okay, top of the show announcements, you guys. Okay, so our Tana episode, yes, we – I love that you replied because I was like, how do people know <laughs> oh, yeah. what the issue is? Oh, At yeah. first, I'm like, we're a small crew working on it. And then I saw uh, you replied on your Instagram, and you're like, oh, we're in jail. Girl, they were uh, – some people were super sweet. I'm like, Oscar, it's okay. Like, <laughs> we know you work hard. Some people were like, Oscar, where's the damn episode? I it was know. kind of a mixed bag. I'm like, let me just like let the girls know. I love that they came to your Instagram. <laughs> I, they go straight to me. It's yeah, so funny. I kind of live for that. <laughs> yes, too. don't give Oscar our time. Even me, I'm just like, you do so much. And we literally gave that episode, what did we do it the day before? Yeah, day before, which yeah. was fun. It, like, usually it always works out. We were all like on time and everything. But yeah, it was just, it was in YouTube prison for a little bit. But we figured it out. We cracked the code, took a, <laughs> took a few tries. <laughs> we had to censor a lot of words, Oscar. <laughs> to censor a lot of words um, and people were thinking like oh wow they have connections in youtube we're like no we <laughs> wish we wish we had one person to talk I to know. It's the but no we no. Uh, we just hard work and we're squeaky clean over here yeah. now which we i was getting like messages be- like not getting an update is wild and i was like tell me about it you're not getting <laughs> from updates YouTube either from us i think they meant from us not getting an update right and i said yeah i agree with you we're not getting enough i know updates. i was i we're was just- so nervous i tweeted once i'm like i'm never going back on until this is done again <laughs> Everyone was asking, and then Tana posted, and I was just like, oh, my God, this is like, this is, I don't know, this is chaos right now. The first few days, I was stressed down, because just because I, I'm like, oh, my God, everyone's, like, letting people down, blah, 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 blah. But Aww. I feel like it kind of built hype, though, because all of a sudden, it came out, <laughs> and everyone was, like, so, ex- like, the live chat and the comments, everyone was so excited. The live chat was popping, I yeah. I was like, wow, there's I some was, hype. too, we were going to wait till Thursday, because I was like, you know what, it's, like, another week, and then we can just be back our guest ups or whatever. But I was just so excited. I was up at 4 a.m. that morning when it got monetized because it was like three different edits you did <laughs> and I was like so excited I wanted to post it but I didn't have the thumbnail I also didn't want to text you it was it was like six o'clock when Moses woke up he said you should check Oscar I'm like he's not up but then I got a DM from you oh, on yeah. X I was like he's up let me text him <laughs> <laughs> you should never DM me if you don't want me to oh, know no. you're up you know I'm always up like at 5 a.m. anyway so yeah you were like at the yeah. gym on a Sunday <laughs> yeah. morning at I 6 a.m. I was sending you tweets from like the uh, actually it was in between sets and I'm like do to do on Twitter and I saw a little AI Trisha, but which really got me. AI started to the get AI, me. AI Trish Lana and that's Del Rey. The one I sent you. Yeah, that's wild. Also, by the way, if you guys want to uh, chat with AI Trish, I'm on Telegram. We'll put the link below somewhere. Uh, I'm on Telegram, and there's an AI bot on there you can chat with. Just a chat so far. There's no AI Trish, but there's an AI voice. It's cool. It sounds just like me. I had to record like paragraphs of like a uh, like reading paragraphs, and it sounds like me. And it's really cute. The first time they did AI of me, it didn't sound like me. It was a lot of babes and honey, and I'm like, that doesn't sound like that. So then I did it. And it sounds so cool. Like you can ask it. It really advice. sounds like you. You were playing it in the car, and I was like, because you were just chatting with it. Yeah, because I was like, "How's Moses?" And I'd be like, "Ah, oh, Moses is so great." Like it was so <laughs> weird. But you can ask the AI trash like questions, relationship advice, friend advice. It's like really cool, actually. So it's kind of the beginning stages. If you have Telegram, everyone's been finding me on Telegram now because I had a join so I could like listen to the AI bot. And I'm like, "Do you have it?" <laughs> No, I don't know. It's no. random. What is it? No. Like, I don't I even know. Well, it's so people that don't want to be spied on or followed on by companies, they use Telegram. Wait, what? Who's yeah, spying on people? Yeah, because 
everyone, like Facebook, Google, like, so WhatsApp used mm. to be that, but then Facebook bought it. You know, they don't want to have even one dark corner in the web. So WhatsApp is the worst because you can tell when someone's online yeah. or reads they, it. So like, now people use Telegram. That. So that's the new. It's the secret. It's a secret society over there. <laughs> so if you want to be secret chatting with AI Trish, check out Telegram. I, I don't know. It might cost something. I have no idea. I don't think it does. But also, why would it be I free? I don't know <laughs> how it works. I'm sure it has a cost. It's a company I worked with for like a really long time. And they're like, do you want to be an AI? I have no idea, actually. But chat i don't actually have no idea i don't get paid yeah i have no idea i don't know if i ever get paid so <laughs> maybe i just did it for free i just gave away my voice but what i was saying about the tana episode is like it did go up on spotify and apple Podcasts on thursday so like pretty much if you don't see the video it'll be up tuesday thursdays because that's kind of our routine and someone else uploads it there right because it was up there early yeah because so, that one didn't get the audio didn't get held up they just post it you yeah know, they're like this is it so <laughs> yeah. i guess if you want to listen to the uncensored huh we're working on spotify to smoothen things oh out like God. they it's long episodes so it takes time to upload like sometimes i'll just wait and nothing is happening That's and eventually weird, it plays so we're working on it. We tell it's them not every supposed week. to be this way. <laughs> every week, everyone's like, it doesn't play on Spotify. And it's, it is frustrating because like that's where people do the downloads and people like to listen. I listen to stuff on Spotify. So it is frustrating and we're we're figuring it all out. But um, yeah. And speaking of the chat, there's new Trish Mojis. Trish Mojis. Trish Mojis. They're so cool. So cool. I need like a big version of all of them so I can post them on my Instagram because they actually look so cool. The art. <laughs> right? Amazing. Shout out. Oh my gosh. You know his name? I forgot. Louisle. His... Louisle. Oh my God. He's so good. We'll also link him below. He's so good he did our intro he does like the coolest art he does the coolest art and the trish emojis are so fun honestly i was going crazy with them in the chat so we do live <laughs> chats every tuesday thursday or sundays i guess if the if it happens i think we figured it out now we kind of know how to and we're ahead like we're ahead a few episodes but it just anyways so yeah the trish emojis are fun they're so cute they have like a praying one they have a kfc one they have a crying one they have the soldier one i love the soldier one i'm just like <laughs> ah they're just so fun to use i love them and okay what's really cool is the little um like memberships to how long you've been a member are the yeah. disco balls i didn't know that yeah, little detail that in there mm -hmm. that's so cute who thought of this did you think of this yeah. <laughs> i love it it was so cute you mentioned it a while ago i was like eh, it doesn't matter whatever but they make such a big difference they're so cute not only disco balls but the emojis are so cute because we have like little pictures of me but the little emojis are so cuter and you can like see them more and can they leave it in the comments like the, the disco emoji? ball is automatic if you become a member it'll auto when you live chat or comment uh -huh. it'll show the disco ball and yeah, the other colors change based on how long you've been a member and like the final one that we have so far i think it's like a year it's so cool it's like a rainbow one so once we get to a year the live chat, the comments are going to be so cute because everyone ah! will have little rainbow disco balls. Yes, pride disco balls with the pride burger <laughs> that I never sold. I love it. That's so cute. It's so cute. And can they, but can they do the Trish emojis in the comments or is that yes, just live chat? You can do comments with the Trish emojis. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. You know what? You want to hear the saddest thing? It actually made me so sad yesterday. Um, So, you know, you can see like who was the first member of your channel. Yeah. And Moses was the first member for oh so long. Oh my God. And I guess one of his cards like expired or something <gasps> like that. And he was able to catch it before because it happened and so he could like renew the membership and one of them like expired and it took away his membership on my channel so he's no longer the first member oh, no. and he, he doesn't have his the disco ball because he had to start over from scratch and it's and it was always the first you, i guess you could see it i didn't know you could see it and now he's no longer the first member and i was like maybe we should just hide the members because that makes me <laughs> that makes me so sad that you were the first i had no idea well you know we'll just continue over the years i'll still be in the, you know one of the first members he had said that to me brought it to my attention i was like but you married me so i feel like that's like cooler than being the first <laughs> member of jazz that's Trish. More official, yeah. but i could tell he was a little sad and i was very sad actually when i heard like the severity of it where i was like oh man like they could see that and like it kind of made me sad and the disco ball just the you know the colors like it kind of made me sad i was like i don't know well, this podcast will live for many years and then you know in this in the bigger scheme of time i'll still be one of the first okay that's sad yeah but no you won't because you have to rejoin now yeah but it's only a matter of a few months did you rejoin already no oh my gosh people always <laughs> ask how to join so i might as well explain it it's only on the YouTube app that you cannot join. Yeah, you have to go on the So desktop. on Android, it's fine. Go on your desktop. You'll see the button join and you can join. Yes. And hopefully at some point we won't even have to, you know, care about YouTube jail if we have enough members. So shout out to the members and the emojis. I knew it. Yes. Okay. What? I fact checked before I said it. Okay. But when he rejoins, he'll still have his, his badge will pick up where he left off. Really? Yes. Well, he, he, but he won't be the number one spot. I don't know about that. But his bat, his disco ball will be the Really? Ball, Babe, though. rejoin right now so that we don't <laughs> All forget. Right. All right, cut. 
after this. this. <laughs> <laughs> I love your little. Why do you have a little eyeball over there and a little guava? <laughs> you have a little eyeball, a little guava juice. This is my little office here. Can they see it? It's my little office. Can they see that or not? I have a signed photo for my wife. God. So Aww. in case that I don't look forward so I can still see her. That's so funny. <laughs> this is my Halloween decorations for... <laughs> can they see it or are you just have it over there? They see some of the things. Okay. I was like, that's so random over there. <laughs> this is my office. <laughs> I love it. It's cute. I love you have a picture of me. So cute. Um, Yeah, that's... I kind of love all... I know. We got to figure out... You guys, I really want to give you guys headshots to my members. I just don't know the logistics of that. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. how do we get the addresses? Who's ship? My mom would ship them out. That's not the issue. It's like, how do we collect the addresses? How do we know every month? Like, because I take photos every time and it'd be cute, like for Halloween. Well, I guess you? you said Patreon, maybe, like, as a way to get the addresses. We need to hire, like, one more person to, like, deal with that. I don't know how. It's just hard to trust. Because I get so many emails about people like, oh, can you hire me? And there's some like legit people, but I'm like, how do I really know I could trust you? You yeah. know what I mean? Because people leave companies or companies or just like whatever. And then they like, just are like, this was the worst experience ever. Even if it's <laughs> like, theater, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, so I get nervous. I get, ner I get scared. I don't know. Not that I'm like a bad boss, but you know, people take anything the wrong. Oh my God. She was like, I don't know. I don't know what I would do, but <laughs> something like there was no water or we worked for four hours no food like i don't know the <laughs> rules of podcasting so we should have i guess we do have we have donuts that's our crafty i guess we should have more crafty like, my mom used to she used to have like chips and stuff i think we have, no one ate we have them lunch. we have mm -hmm. water we have donuts chips everything it's very accommodating like, it's okay studios. i was yeah. like we should probably have more especially when people come i want to get this fridge i've been talking about it for so long i want to get this like fridge um, for the Just Trish water bottles when people come, but also like Diet Cokes and stuff. So when people come, they could have their options, you know, because some people are like, oh, I'll take a Diet Coke. I'm like, okay, we don't have it, but we should. We should have it stocked because it looks like a studio. We're trying to get epoxy floors. Also, if anyone has epoxy floor recommendations in, <laughs> in the LA area, we've been trying to get epoxy floors in here. And it's a just... good plumber if you have. <laughs> we do need a plumber. My bathroom has we been working everything. in the closet. We also need our water fixed. Our, we have one of our water heaters are out in the kitchen. Oh my God. <laughs> Email me. <laughs> it and works. if you want to buy a Birkin, and if you want to buy a Birkin, and if that person by any chance is single for your mom. Oh, okay. I was like, Wait, yeah, single for my mom. I mean, yeah, send me an email. Trisha Paytas, YouTube at yahoo.com. We so we do the memberships and also, yeah, that's it. <laughs> all the all the updates. <laughs> All the updates. Ice Spice uh, noticed us. Oh, that was a big oh one. My yes, God. We the I was up. so excited. I didn't even know how to react because I saw she not she responded to my TikTok comments. She followed me on TikTok. She tweeted it and she posted on her Instagram story. It was like cross platform. Yeah, that's that like was, a lot to like post lot. on all platforms and comment. And it was always something different. I think on TikTok it was ten out of ten. On her IG stories, like she ate. Yeah. On Twitter, it was like she won this year already. Mm -hmm. Like. I felt so cool. I think that might have been the biggest celebrities who ever acknowledged my cosplay. And it was like the quickest too. Like that happened so fast. Yeah, it was that day. Yeah. It was the day I posted. And I was like, oh my God. I was like freaking out. I, I got so many texts. It was like, it was a Tana episode. So she was here for like eight hours because we glammed together. We did the podcast and then we like hang out afterwards. And it was like seven or eight o'clock and I was looking at all the texts. Or Moses on my phone. Yeah, because we were filming mm -hmm. and then the texts kept coming up. I thought something happened. And then I see a text <laughs> from Oscar saying I'm crying. And I'm like, something happened. <laughs> Yeah. So I looked and I saw that she posted. You. That was wild. I know he like stopped the podcast. He's like, I spice. So I was like, oh my God. News. And I couldn't like grasp it. Cause you know, like you said, I'm in the interview. So I was like, wait, what? It was very cool. I'm glad she liked it. All the people saying I look like, who was it? Mrs. Dabney from, <laughs> I was like, people just like to be mean. They like to be mean so much. I mean, I get it. I get it. But gosh, people are just really haters sometimes. And all the comments like, looks like Mrs. Dabney. I was like, oh, not funny. <laughs> I Spice thought she liked it. So that's all that matters. And that really shuts up everyone else too. Like I Spice's opinion on an I Spice cosplay like outweighs every other opinion. So, done and done. Yeah. But it's like anytime you can be like a meme or anything like, well, you know, I guess we'll take it. I'll take yeah. it. I'll yeah. take Mrs. Dabney if they want to do a reboot. What is she from? Good luck, Charlie. Something. I don't know. I'll do that all day long. So I was super pop crave even reported like. I spice commented on Trisha's cosplay. And that's how you know. That's how you know. Yeah. When are we getting pop crave on here? Didn't you say we could yeah, get someone we can get on it. here? Should we do it next week? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, that's Halloween. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we yeah. can't. So we they want to come in costume. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's already hard enough to find a third we'll costume first, for that look. The first non-Halloween. November. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, November. Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. 
Thank you to today's sponsor, Earnin. Every day is payday with Earnin. Life doesn't happen bi-weekly, so why should payday? The money you earn can be in your hands today with Earnin. You guys, this is one of the best sponsorships we've had. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work, up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. Girl math, it's actually so great because when you know the money's coming, but they hold it for a week or two, you're like, I want to go out on a date tonight. I want to buy clothes for this. There's an event tomorrow we have to do. Earnin gives you that cash option while you need it, okay? It's life changing. It's life saver. Life can be unexpected. Earnin helps you with the financial aspect of it. So you don't have to stress. You don't have to worry. An emergency vet trip, whatever comes up, Earnin has got you covered takes it out of your next paycheck. Very easy to use, and we love that. Don't you want payday every day? Get access to the cash that you earned today with the Earn In app. Feeling financial anxiety? Worry doesn't help, but Earn In does. Make Earn In a part of your financial routine and join Earn In's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earn In, I think about financial stability, security. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. And don't we all want that? Download Earn In today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earn In app, type Trish under podcast. When you sign up, it really helps the show. Trish under podcast. Subject to your available earnings location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Earnin is the app that's helping millions of Americans to feel self-sufficient without falling into debt traps. Earnin is designed to support you in the short term and long term. Money at the speed of you. Get up to $100 a day of your pay within minutes of earning it. No mandatory fees and no credit check. Hot topic. Did you watch Bad Bunny on SNL? Oh, my God. Again, once again, I saw clips. Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> Do you not watch SNL? I'm not like a full episode kind of girl, I think, when it comes to SNL. I'll watch, like, I'll wake up, and then I'll see what went down via, like, Twitter clips. Okay. Like, yeah. so he's trending. Like, Pedro Pascal was trending. Yes. So, are they both Puerto Rican? He did, like, the monologue. Pedro was basically, like, a co-host. He, like, was in every single sketch with him. Like, Mick Jagger, for some reason, was on with him in every sketch and episode. It was great. I'm in my I'm in my Latin music era. I'm Bad Bunny. Honestly. I was kind of like not about Bad Bunny when I started starting with Kendall because you know we all were kind of side eyeing. But I love Bad Bunny. I've had a Bad Bunny like glitter tumbler that I've had for like years. Like I loved him, and then the whole Kendall thing happened. I'm like, we don't love him, but not love him again. Pedro is Chilean, by the way. Just to... Pedro's Chilean, and yeah. Bad Bunny is Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican. Yeah, I love Pedro. I love Bad Bunny. I even love Kendall. Like I have love for Kendall. What? She was there. Yes. Wait, was Travis Kelsey or was that last week? Travis that was Kelsey the week and Taylor Yeah. Oh, with oh. Peterson. Side note for a second. I'm going to bring a little... I saw this jar on Twitter. Someone made a little jar that said, pay 25 cents anytime someone mentions Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey is included. Do we make one? I think I... We should make a... Tra- that for me and then you, an idle, able weekend Oh one. my God. For I'll be one paying. episode. Let's see how much money we... Okay, okay, okay. I know. I We did dress up as the idol this weekend. We found the car. Those photos, I don't know. They'll come out next week or something. But yeah, I love it. And we asked the people who own the car because it was the one that weekend sat in and... They're like, yeah, it was really cool. They were telling us about the whole thing. They got to like go to the house and with the car. I was like, oh man, it's so cool. <laughs> I do love the idol. Uh, yeah, we it's are. It's <laughs> so good. But Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey are everywhere. Like honestly, like we'll probably do a couple's costume with them before Halloween. Yeah, because you should. They had a really cute one last night. It was his red flannel. I found the exact one. Red flannel with like these like khaki pants with like little ice creams on them. I found that for Moses, and then I ordered like a vintage Kansas City Chiefs sweater with a black pleated skirt and black loafers. That's cute. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's very Swift coded. And then she had a Cartier nail necklace that was like eighteen thousand dollars. I was like, well, I ordered one off DH Gate for like <laughs> twenty four because that's what I guess she's a billionaire. It doesn't matter, but it's yeah. wild to me when people can spend twenty thousand on a necklace. I'm like, Jesus, that's. But yeah, when you have that much money, it's what is that like twenty dollars to us, right? Yeah, and I guess you have to have the little friendship bracelet too. She the eighty seven. Yeah. Where do you get that? She did. I think she made it herself. Oh my gosh! I'm sure you can find one on Etsy. The friendship bracelets are wild. We should make them for just Trish. Oh, we should. Yeah. yeah, they're cute. I like them. I, I guess cute. I All love that. that. To say, I'm gonna be better about not talking. <laughs> <laughs> this, 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 it's like the swear jar, but yeah. same. I know because it does get so annoying when you like don't like 
them or like you just don't care because like honestly yeah at first like now they're everywhere so i don't mind talking about them but yeah like you're just like i don't care about taylor swift or whatever but then you're like but they're everywhere i annoy myself so i think that's when i was like do you i never annoy myself with my obsessions (laughs) i will talk about the idol i talk about it all the time with moses i'll be like do you really oh i was like when i asked you that today at dinner i was like do you think uh like abel stays in the house when they were filming or do you think he has a different house that he goes to (laughs) and moses will like entertain me he's like no, he probably has a different house. Like, you don't want to be there with all the crew. And he's like, he probably gets paid for his house being in the show. Like, we're having this whole conversation. I never get tired of it. Honestly, I'm just like, well, you know, the next phase will come. And I asked him that too on our walks. I'm like, I wonder why. Like, I get so upset. Like, so obsessed. Because we're very open. We're talking about our dreams. He said in one of his dreams, a girl tried to kiss him. I'm like, oh. But then I'll tell him, I'm like, no, I know. I had these dreams that, like, the weekend once has sex with me. And I'm like, no, but, like, you know, I'm married and I have a kid. Like, I don't know. It's very weird. And those are, and it's like, I don't, I don't know. It's not like I think about this all day, but those are my dreams at night. So we talk about it. And I'm like, I wonder why I get so obsessed with something and then I'm like over it. Like, I think about Lost last year. I was so obsessed with Lost. I was so obsessed with this actor named Naveen Andrews who I'm like obsessed with or I was obsessed with. But now it's like, I don't really care. He has like a new show coming out on like uh, Freebie, like her aunt, one of those shows. And I was just like, ah, I kind of don't care anymore. But I was obsessed. Like my dreams were all about him. <laughs> like I was just like, I love him. I did a whole podcast hoping he'd come on it, like a Lost podcast. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, and I, and how, and what, what draws me to that and why do I become so obsessed and so fixated and then I'm over it, you know? Yeah. I think you can hyperfixate and then you can almost burn yourself out in the hyperfixation. My hyperfixations are always about like things for the most part. Yeah. The hyperfixation is real. It's weird with things. I wonder why things you hyperfixate. I have no idea. I always do that hmm. though. Like, Monster High Dolls was like my big no thing as a way. kid. Yes. Oh my god, you and Sugar and Spice we get along. Say, they have so many Monster High Dolls. I never got into them. Oh my god, they're so cute. They're Even, ugly, I think. They're not I, cute. They have like a big gay audience, I think. And I think it's because oh. like it's kind of like the they're like the outside girls, you know, they, they don't okay. fit in. You I take know. it back. Shout yeah. out to my I didn't know they were gay icons. We, we take it back. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we love, we love them. Yeah. They should be on the cover of do you know there's a magazine called Gay Times? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be on that. I saw Julia Fox was on it. I'm like, I'm going to be on Gay Times. <laughs> you and the Monster High Dolls should be on Gay Times. Oh my God. That would be that everything. That would be everything. Okay. I'd be holding the Monster High Dolls. They have Beetlejuice Monster High Dolls, which okay. are like. Oh, I think we have those. Yeah. They oh, came really? in like a double box. Yes. Like it was, yeah, we do have them. Those they were cute. cute. Okay. I didn't yeah. know those were Monster High. Yeah. What makes a Monster High? That's just the brand. Yeah. They did like a special collab with Beetlejuice. Yeah. The box yeah. is cool. Like open. Yeah. Anything Beetlejuice we have, I like love yeah. Beetlejuice. I think we have those. Those dolls were pretty cute. So you you hyperfix on things. I don't really. I like to collect things based on what I like, like pop culture, like Britney yeah, Spears, or. But I don't think I ever fixated on things. Hmm, we should have Dr. Drew on, if anyone knows. Like, I really wonder, like, why? What? Because do you think everyone has hyper? No, I know because Moses doesn't hyperfixate on things. So, like, not everyone has oh that. God. So, I wonder what it is about our brains. It's is it weird. our generation? Is it our brain? Is it our? How did we get on that? That was like a whole tangent. Oh, about fixating on oh, the weekend yeah. and Taylor Swift. And do you, would you say you get obsessed with Taylor Swift or not really? You just like her. I think when I was younger, I would say it was. Oh, actually, no. I kind of like you when I was younger. I would mm-hmm. have like. My first hyperfixation was like Ashley Simpson. Like I loved her. She oh, was all was over my say wall. That. When you like Monster High, I was like, did you also like <laughs> Ashley Simpson more than Jessica Simpson? Because when you were saying like outside is edgy, I was like, oh my god, you are. I <laughs> loved Ashley Simpson like that. I was like hella hyperfixated on her. Like that was my first concert. Oh my god, she was all over my wall. It was your first concert? Was she by herself? Was she headlining? She was by herself. Yeah, the autobiography tour. Oh my god, at Universal, the Universal Amphitheater. Wow. Yeah. I went through, like, my phases, of that, and then I kind of ended on Taylor and then kind of stuck with her. That was my last, like, major one. So it's interesting that – because for me, I always did it with, like, guys because I thought saw myself, like, dating them, I guess. So it's interesting, like, with girls, what do you think? Like, how do you – what's the association? What's the, like, end goal? Like, if it was, like, your ultimate fantasy? I think I just, like – They'd be my girlies, I guess. Like, I see them. I don't know. It's like that weird parasocial, like, friendship. Interesting. Yeah, I guess the females, like, I hyperfixate on, like, Anna, Pam, Brittany. Yeah, it's, like, things I wish I could. I almost wish I could be them, I feel. Mm. Like, for me, like, Anna Nicole was, like, someone, God, I wish I could. Like, that would be the person I want to be. Pam was, like, how I wish I looked in my head, like, skinny with big boobs. And then (laughs) Brittany was, like, the talent, the stardom that, like, everyone loved her and I wanted to be that. Yeah. So, I guess, yeah. I have very, I have less lesser female hyper fixations than i do men all mine are yeah all of mine were trust you didn't have a guy that you're like oh my god he's so hot um harry styles for a little bit i guess like when i in my directioner phase what happened Um, that short-lived 
I think just getting older, like, I'm like, okay, I can only really choose way one thing at a time. Right. As far as, like, a person. Um, I was just bad at balancing. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that way, too. I felt like the older I got, I would, like, not. And I think it's lesser, for sure. And especially after I got married, it was definitely lesser because there was a point where I was just, like, fixating on, like, any, like, single celebrity. I was like, I'm going to date them. I'm gonna yeah. like, it was, like, weird. I don't know. Like, that's, like, not a normal mindset. But, um, yeah, that was very sporadic and very random when it hits. Like I said, like, Lost was random. The weekend is so random. Like, that's never my, like, type of voice or anything. Like, I don't know. It just it's, it's very random. But it hits when it hits yeah. you know i don't know and twilight like you know just like random stuff oh yeah what twilight, twilight was yeah, yeah they have something in that for sure yeah mm. games. we do need dr drew to like analyze that stuff yeah it is interesting bring him back yeah bring him back oh yeah hunger games did you see that co-star tom blythe did you see what he had to say about rachel zegler he clapped back yeah he was in her defense i was like is this oscar typing <laughs> Are you running his Instagram as well? <laughs> yeah, what did he see? Someone commented on his Instagram, can you deliver a message for me? Tell <laughs> Rachel Zegler that Snow White is going to suck. And Tom Blythe responded, can you do me a favor and get an effing life? <laughs> <laughs> Which I love. Like, I don't know. I think things are going to turn around for Rachel. She released her song from the uh, Hunger Games soundtrack, The Hanging Tree, the, which is... <laughs> Controversial. I don't like the name of that. Like, that's so weird. But she sounds so good on it. I was like... Yeah, she's a phenomenal oh singer. My God. That's the first time I've heard her sing, I think, really. But were people over it? I thought I saw something where people were like, okay, we're over this song or something. Really? I don't, I don't know. Maybe it just came I... out. I think, yeah, I think you're on that Rachel's like, anything that she the does... The Rachel's like, hate page. <laughs> yeah. I really don't want to be on it. I really am trying to like her. And honestly, like, him defending her... is you know, When someone, like, knows her and defends her, like, that's always good and it, it would be like so hard everyone just like hates you like that and that way i have like this empathy for her because like besides you like i feel like the whole internet is just like yeah. trying rooting against her you know like snow white's gonna suck and this and that yeah. and yeah I, I i hope i hope because you sent me something you sent me a dm where it's like it got good reviews yeah snow white snow and i was like wow okay maybe it'll and that would be the best story for her, for everyone, where it's like, whoa, she blew us away as Snow White. Like, damn, we didn't know. It's kind of like when, like I told you, when Austin Butler was going to be Elvis, I was like, mm, I hate it. And then I was like, oh, it's like my favorite movie ever. He's so good. Like, everything. So maybe that'll be Rachel Zegler. She just needs the right the right projects, the right PR person. And I think yeah. she can have a good, a solid, people love a comeback story. So Love a comeback yeah. story. I think if she tries to be more herself and not Jennifer Lawrence, like you said, I think yeah. that's where it is. We already have one Jennifer Lawrence and, you know. Plenty of that. We love her, but plenty. <laughs> Nor Hard Feelings is streaming right now. I just saw it. someone said that they were streaming. So maybe we'll watch that. We were looking for a movie to watch. I'm like, maybe No Hard. We watched oh, a horrible movie, not to be negative. Oh, my God. I'm literally the I've had it, girls. I've had it with Halloween movies that move to the rural from the city, and, like, the teenagers are so over it, and then they meet a ghost, and then, like, oh, my God, this town is crazy. It's cursed. Okay, we watched one on Netflix called – it was, like, number three on Netflix, too. Um, it had Kelly Rowland, who I love, by the way. I love Kelly Rowland. Um, Marlon Wayans, I think. Marlon Wayans was in it, and who looked completely different. And um, just a bunch of random people, like Rob Wriggle and, like, all those comedians and stuff like that. It was called The – Curse of Sleepy Hollow or something or Sleepy oh. Bridge. Have you seen? No. Anyways, these that was a horrible movie, but they keep getting made, and I'm always shocked by them. There's a Halloween movie. It had like a it had like a coziness to it, but we watched another one before that. Oh, Haunted Mansion, and they all kind of have the same story. Like QB Halloween, they all kind of have the same story. Haunted Mansion is like a kid moves up to like outside of the city, and the parents are like you're gonna love it here, and then it's like ghosts, and they're like oh my god, this is crazy, and maybe it's maybe it's it the wasn't Halloween. bad. It wasn't bad. You weren't even watching it. I was. <laughs> it was okay. Maybe it wasn't bad. Maybe it was. I don't know. It just compared was like, to how bad most movies are, it was kind of. It was the standard, you know. It, it is like crazy because then I'm like, I wonder how much these people get paid, how much that movie was, because it just seems so. Everything seemed so low budget, and I'm like, God, I want to be in one of these movies. I just want to be in a movie so bad, even if one of these like crappy movies. Today there's supposed to be a, a they're showing a teaser the first teaser trailer of Snow White at a convention <gasps> and it hasn't leaked online yet but I'm waiting for that to happen because I think that is when oh. maybe you'll get sold on it if it is looks it good out? it's not online yet no looked... it hasn't leaked yeah uh. I was just looking it up it hasn't leaked online yet she has one shot Rachel has one shot yeah. with this teaser trailer and if it looks bad we are in trouble I it's feel like the teaser well. trailers can really be amazing like the Little Mermaid one when people first saw it they're like oh my gosh like everyone's mad is Halle Bailey pregnant oh there's 
there's i mean it's hard to speculate but there's been the theory going around for a long time that she's pregnant and there were some photos that surfaced the one in the week. hoodie yeah. and then she had that puffy dress on yeah everyone's so mad why is it because how old is she is she young like why she's are young so, let me double check like how is it 21 or 25 like she's 23 yeah uh, that's young yeah but, you know it's but i think reese witherspoon had her babies at 23 i think it's kind of like twofold because um the guy that she's with people don't really like why because i know they're like oh my god not with that guy everyone like hates on him but was it you that was telling me or someone that knows him or knows them or was like, oh, he treats her like so good. Like, were you telling me that? It wasn't me. God, who was telling us? Did you remember? Someone's like, he actually treats her so well. And I was like, oh, I don't know who that was. Okay, random. Someone we know like personally was like, he's great. Because I was like, why do people hate him? And like, I don't know. He actually is like really great to her. But... I know that around like around the Little Mermaid like promo campaign, he was really shady. Like, I think he was really insecure that Hallie was getting like really famous. Mm. So he was like saying shady things about her. Um, Wait, publicly? It was like on Twitter and like liking tweets that were a little shady, especially when it came to oh. um, Jonah, who played Prince Eric, because everyone liked mm. um, Hallie and um, Jonah together. So I think he got really insecure and he was like very, he was almost like a little toxic about that stuff. Oh, um, yeah, that's never a good look. It's like yeah, Kiki's like, boyfriend. Yeah. I was like, oh. Because it's like, I get feeling that way, but also like don't publicly show it. Like, I think people think because she's like had she just had a little mermaid which is so successful and then it was pretty much like no pun intended but the world was her oyster like <laughs> <laughs> yeah right everyone was and the color purple's coming out and yes. like she's in that yeah and this is like her time you know like i think people have this fear that all oh, because she has a baby like maybe she her career will take like a back seat almost like maybe like rihanna like you know she kind of mm. focused on like family and like the businesses and not like the music anymore right so i think people kind of have that fear for hallie but so it's like selfishly they're like ah oh, she's pregnant i think it's yeah it's like a mix of like not really liking her um, boyfriend and like wanting her to mm. you know pursue these like big like roles I right mean, now maybe she's really happy maybe she's super excited to be pregnant and be a mom and like let her be happy she just did huge movies like honestly her taking like a year off to have babies like it's not that she's gonna still be young she's gonna still be in demand yeah it would be hard i would say that like for sure if i was like on like a hit like if i had a hit movie and another hit movie coming out like I'd probably want to post. I try to postpone now my pregnancy because I think I'm going to be on White Lotus or something like that. But I, when you're that big, yeah. But, you know, I feel like those roles will always come to her. And she really has played the two most iconic characters when she's in Color Purple and Little Mermaid. I mean, there's really no. Yeah. In the same year, too. Yeah. Like, she could take a year off and have a baby. Plus, there's, like, you know, nannies, all that stuff like that. Like, yeah. They having, go back to work quickly, I yeah, feel. Like, having a baby isn't, like, the end of the world, you know? So, That's I think funny. people kind of. And, I mean, she hasn't, like, confirmed. It's all speculation right now, too, based on just, like, on photos and whatnot but yeah like either way if she is pregnant i think she would she's so sweet with like all the little girls from like the little mermaid press yeah. tour like she's so just like has just a sweetness to her if she is a mom i think she'd be a really good mom too and I, she's so talented that like it doesn't really matter like no. she can always come back to always. music and movies and whatever she'll always she look like young and beautiful like she's gonna be like that for a yeah. long time so i think there's like people get so it's so funny how people get up so upset about it but then they're like so excited like for other people's pregnancies that was it I think I saw the Kendall Jenner pregnancy. Did you see her photo? Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, that looks pregnant. And then it was like someone's butt someone's or something. Someone's butt in the back, yeah. That's wild. How do you even capture a photo like that? Because that's like so – it was so like perfectly round and it was black too. Like she had the black leggings and black leggings. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, if she was pregnant by Bad Bunny, that would have been so wild. That would have been a yeah. gag. It was like a paparazzi photo of her walking. And, yeah, there was someone standing in the background whose butt just happened to be like placed like at her <laughs> stomach. But someone had photoshopped the the girl out in the background, so it just looked like Kendall was legit pregnant. Oh, someone photoshopped it out? There was a version, yeah, that was circulating. Oh, so it looked like she was just pregnant. Yeah. That would make sense, though. I feel like that baby would be so good looking. Like, I kind of, like, live like a bad bunny on us, and I'm like, I can't live. Maluma is having a baby. Oh, is he having a baby? Yes, I didn't know he's that. pregnant, uh, or his girlfriend's pregnant. pregnant. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God, everyone is getting pregnant right now. Who else was it? Was it Halle Bailey? But Kendall's not. Kendall's not, yeah. Has it been confirmed? Maybe she is. I guess she could. Could be we don't really what know what if someone it. photoshopped the person into the photo that's <laughs> true you know what i mean maybe no, it was reverse it, photoshop she was at snl like at after parties and stuff with uh um, well, that doesn't Bunny. mean anything but i mean there was no bump like that bump that, that you was could in the, see yeah yeah i mean she could but i would love to see kendall pregnant just because like the family era of the kardashians is interesting to watch i don't watch them anymore because the tristan storyline was bothering me but i kind of love them all like with their kids and stuff like that i think they're like in their yeah. cute era back to like snl i guess like okay bad bunny i mean i've always thought he was like hot and stuff but SNL made me, like, really think he's, like, because ah. he's also funny and, like, charming, yes. too. So I was like, oh, my God, he's so hot. But then I'm so like. So hot. 
I'm having a really hard time not being a hater when it comes to Kendall. Why? Why thought we're doing positive spins? Why? I'm trying to be the We Love It Girls, but oh, Wait, I don't know. Why? I why? can't help it. I'm just like, I've seen the clips and he's so cute. I'm like, he shouldn't be with Kendall. Like, he should not be with Kendall. Like, yeah. He should be someone charismatic and like charming and like with vivacious. And to me, I don't, I just can't stop. I just can't stop hating on Kendall. It's it's wild because I know what you mean. Like on the show, she really gives us nothing, right? And it's like all the Kardashians give us so much and she gives us nothing. And then you look at Bad Bunny on SNL and he like seems so funny. Well, I mean, it's SNL. But like he's like, oh, he seems like he has such a good sense of humor. He's funny. He's hot. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. But maybe Kendall's got something. She's been with like basketball players and stuff like that. Maybe she has a little. Oh my God. This one just really irked. Like people were upset about Kylie and Timothy. But that one I could, I could see. This one I just cannot get by like. Kendall was someone so famous and so successful. I'm like... It's wild. Do you think it was set up? I don't know. Well, there was some TikTok tea that I saw about oh. SNL. And granted, is this true? I don't know. But am I choosing to believe it okay. because I'm a hater? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. It's like selective selective believing. You get I guess. one hater pass. Mine's Rachel Zegler. <laughs> I'm trying to change it too. I'm trying to change it too. But you can have Kendall. I'm self-aware about it. You know, that it's an irrational just like dislike for yeah, Kendall yeah, Jenner. Yeah. But there was a girl posted a TikTok... Um, she said that she was in the audience for SNL um, when Bad Bunny was hosting and performing. And there was a group of girls, like, uh, screaming for him and, like, calling him Poppy and stuff. Oh. And Kendall was also in the audience. And she said she was sending, giving dirty looks and side-eyeing her the whole I time. I don't believe that. I There's believe no it. Way. I believe I it. No. There's no way Kendall's, like, being threatened by fans. You know what I mean? She's probably, like... No, there's no, no way. <laughs> I'm choosing to believe. It's oh like so God. uncorroborated, so like random. And with like their photo, with it. their video. She's, there was text on the screen. That's all I needed. <laughs> oh my God. Did you see the clip of him when they're like hiking with the mosquitoes? Oh, yeah. And he's like, oh, mommy, get the mosquitoes and whatever. Yeah. They had that at the, at the SNL. I think it was the promo. It was like, he's like, oh, mommy, mosquitoes. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, I love that for him. I love it. I just, I, I, I love them, and I'm rooting for them. And I feel like this is the one where Kendall could have like a baby with. He's successful. He's probably the most successful guy that any of the Kardashians have been with. I think he is so. He's so huge. So, yeah, and that, he's been so huge for so long. Like yeah. Bad Bunny's been around for so long. And, and the he, way he talks is cute. His little accents. He's like, oh, this, this, this. And he's like a Lady Gaga. He's a little monster. He's Lady Gaga stand. Oh, did you see his face when Lady yeah. Gaga? And he's like so excited he about felt it like you want yeah it's so cute he's so charming he is charming i so know we love bad bunny can we get him on the podcast why not i mean actually after this probably not because i'm a kendall hater so. we <laughs> love kendall bring kendall like we love you she'll be sending me dirty she'll be sitting next to moses giving me dirty looks the whole time <laughs> <She's side-eye. laughs> to get the camera on her oh my gosh that would be so he'd probably be on bobby altov's podcast I, or something trust me i feel she like that's Maluma. happening yeah who's her latest one was it scarlet was the latest one i think that was the last one i saw but i don't really keep up with her like that so mm, does she wow i think about that constantly <laughs> her interviews i'm like that's amazing it really is i, I just like how would she imagine britney spears went on there i think that would, I would she die that would be the end of me the I think. one me too yeah that would be it i'm over like yeah. done like that would be crazy and wild I like can't, you can't even like i won't even like think about it because mm. that's just so because it also is kind of a possibility i guess because she's gotten so many people but so many people and i feel if britney does one thing someone will be like oh you know you should go do the bobby all yeah. podcast and she'll be like, okay yeah, but no. bobby in character with britney spears would not oh Oh, yeah. Oh, think, that would end her because the Britney fans, they come so hard for anyone. I think anyone. Britney would end her right there and then. I don't think she'll be <laughs> Britney, into that. Yeah. No, Britney's like so, she's, yeah, she, she would totally. I was going to use the word. Everyone keeps using that C word. And I'm like, she's so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I was like, I want to use it because it's such a, all the cool people are using it now. But I'm like, you were you did too. I was like, oh my God, this is such a cool word. But she's so, that's what I was going to say. She's so cool. God, yeah. I wonder if Britney will do any interviews for her book. I don't know. I feel like it's looking less and less likely as. Because it's Oh, it's out today when you guys watch this but we're filming this Monday so yeah. it's out tomorrow so she's not gonna do any interviews because even with people it wasn't like in it's person an email an mm-hmm. email interview I love an email interview it's easy yeah, yeah I love when people just wanna give me the questions <laughs> I had an in person interview on Friday and it was fine but it is weird you're just like oh my god it's so weird they come to your house and you're just like I don't know you feel the need to be on as opposed to like an email you yeah. can just be like typing it and you can like read it back to and see how things would come across oh that's actually true i know because after it i was like oh could you actually take that part out (laughs) you know i talked to someone just very casually as if we're like friends and i was like oh maybe edit that part i don't know (laughs) you start thinking about it after and you're just like oh yeah (laughs) yeah speaking of bad movie trailers did you see the sydney sweeney glenn powell anyone but you trailer oh no no 
Tell me about it. It's Jimmy, bad. so boring. It's just like, yeah, well, I think she's beautiful. Yeah, but she's beautiful. Glenn Powell is hot. I have um, no idea who that is. Glenn he was Powell. in Scream Queens. Which one? He was Emma Roberts' boyfriend in Scream Queens, the blonde one. And he was in Top Gun Maverick. So this was a movie that sparked all the rumors that Glenn Powell and Sydney Sweeney were having an affair. Was he married? He had a long-term girlfriend. And Sydney mm. was is still engaged and was also engaged at the time of them filming the movie. Who's she engaged to? Um, I think he's a restaurateur. He's like very mm. – like a normal kind of guy. Okay. It's a steamy rom-com. And there was all these scenes of them being like super intimate like – as they were filming, but also they were posting each other on Instagram as if they were a couple. Like hanging on each other, yes, arms cuddling. around. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the way that they would talk about each other, like so flirty. And Glenn oh. Powell's girlfriend even like unfollowed him and <gasps> Sydney Sweeney. And oh. that's when things really, everyone was like, wow. Like, the unfollow is the big, if you yeah, unfollow. it's a statement. So they're broken up. Glenn Powell and his girlfriend, uh, yes, they are broken up. But Sydney Sweeney is still engaged. Sydney Sweeney, Sweeney is still engaged, yes. Wow. But in the, I remember like TikTok at the time was running crazy with this rumor. I remember like a year ago or something. Yeah, we were talking like, about this. Over yeah. the summer. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was like a big thing. And then so everyone was like, okay, when the trailer's going to come out, like this movie must be good. It must be hot. It must be steamy because <laughs> they had all these freaking rumors. Like it was like the early 2000s. Like, you know, when like like Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like when it was a steamy rom-com yeah. like that. Like this material has to be good. Right. But this trailer came out and it was giving nothing. Giving nothing. It was giving nothing. And it's comedy too. It's, it's a rom-com. Rom which is so random. Them. they don't like make those anymore for a reason they don't even show like the trailer didn't really show the plot it's these two people who hate each other but we don't know why they hate each other we don't know why they're having to pretend date the music was like euphoria music it was like so serious like if it's a rom-com like give us a little like pop like yeah megan like... trainer kim petrus like <laughs> pink for crying yeah, out loud right, like right. something nothing gave nothing. nothing no yeah i that whole thing from the beginning from i heard the stories i just like and you know what? You hear, you see the trailer, and I like couldn't even bother to click on it. Usually, I click on everything, and I'm like, <laughs> I can't even bother to click on this trailer. I think Sydney Sweeney is so beautiful, but like, I just, you know, some people just don't care about their personal lives. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like I don't care. I don't know why. I guess because she's just not like public or something like that, so I just never care that much. Yeah, but it's also like the director of this movie um, directed Easy A. Easy A is probably like maybe my top oh, Easy favorite so movie of all time. Oh, good. I love that one. It's. I literally think if I had to pick one movie, like mm. Easy A is probably my number one movie. I love the movie. I love the whole like cast in it. I love like uh, Amanda Bynes in it. I thought she was yeah. so good. Like obviously Penn Badgley, obviously Emma Stone. When she does her little musical number, like I was so jealous. Like I wanted to be her. <laughs> I used to like do the little A on my like like outfit. I had this black t shirt. I was like an adult. I wasn't like a kid, but I was like older, and I had like the A on it. And I was like, I loved it. I just thought it was everything. It was so cool. She was so cool. Emma Stone was like such an it girl for that so long. That was her like breakout like role. <laughs> was that the one that made her like big? To me, I, she says no. I think she credits like oh. La La Land or whatever, and she like kind of makes fun of Easy A sometimes. But no, she was so big when La La Land came out. She was like yeah. already established. Yeah, so. and I think Easy A is the one because she was always kind of like a supporting okay. character before like yeah. in Super Badness. This was like her starring role. Right. And it was the most iconic movie in the history That's of cinema. so funny that she wouldn't like accredit it to that. That's so weird. Because also, I'm sorry, La La Land was awful. I don't we hated it, right? Did you hate it? Any movie that's like an Oscar movie like and critically acclaimed, it must be good to some people and it must be a technically a good movie, but it's just not for me. Oh my God. It was so awful. Like we, did, we didn't even finish it and I like love musicals. So I was like, <laughs> I'm going to love La La Land, but we never even finished it. Like I don't know where we ended. We ended somewhere where they're like in his house or I don't, I don't know where we ended. I have no idea. Maybe he wasn't in his house there was another one we didn't finish with ryan gosling it was the one with steve crazy Carell. stupid love yeah everyone's like okay this one girl i know she's just like this is the best movie ever you gotta watch and i was like eh, i don't really like ryan gosling but okay this was before the barbie movie i liked him barbie movie but i didn't really like him in much else but awful i also just say the notebook too kind of a little like nah. <laughs> do you know what i mean like it's not bad i'm not gonna yeah. hate hate the notebook but it kind of went nowhere it kind of went nowhere i haven't seen it recently like i remember at the time same with crazy stupid love at the time i liked it but I haven't like watched it back as an adult and I, or like in current times. And I feel like that could change. Yeah. It was how I feel about just it. his character is not believable in any of those movies. I like weird, they just like, don't buy into the character. Like, yeah. Cause he was amazing in Ken. Like I actually like, I think that's lived the only character he's be believable in. That's what I think too. Me because I've seen so many Ryan Gosling movies and I'm just like, and I loved him Barbie. I was thinking like, I don't like Ryan Gosling just in general, but I like, loved maybe him that's his true character. Maybe he's a Ken. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. The the crazy stupid love was so awful. And I love Steve Carell. No, all of them. Awful. And La La Land. I was like, you're Lala the was... jazz. Like, it, it doesn't feel like <laughs> he's was... really that person. Never. It was weird. And I love Emma Stone in both book. of those movies. She was, like, not good in. She was good in The Birdman. Did you ever watch that one? No, that's another, like, serious one, right? But that's pretty good. Like, that's more, like, yeah, she's more of an actress in that one. But I love unserious ones. Like, um, what was the one she was in? Oh, House Bunny. Did you watch that oh. one? Oh. 
love, love house, the house bunny. bunny and i love her in that one she's so good so good that, again another iconic cast so, like the whole cast yeah even um who is that girl that just had a baby with the old guy Catherine mcphee, Catherine McPhee. she yeah. was great in that movie mm-hmm. the girl from two broke girls was great in that Kat movie Dennings, yeah, yeah. You, i love the names. I know all those oh girlies I love. Rumor Willis was in it. Oh, Rumor yeah. Willis with like the back brace was so good. Anna Ferris, I love. Anna, that's an actress. Like that's oh. an icon. Anna Ferris, like was that was yeah. a performance of a lifetime. Oh, Anna Ferris, every role she's ever had, I would love to be able to play. Yeah, It'd be so she great. Is very she's you. like, oh, that's the person I wanted to be as a cut. I wish I could play all these roles. Yeah. They're so great. She's amazing. I hope she's okay. What's she doing? Oh, she's definitely okay. Cause she was in yeah. that uh, CBS show for a long time, and she made I a lot it. of money. Mom. Yeah. I thought it was like, was it called Mom? I think it was called Mom. Yeah. I was like, I felt like I was the only one watching at the time. Like I felt, like, but it was on a long time. It was on a long time. I it, love who's her mom and that. That's so, Allison, Allison Janney. Yes, yes. Love her. she's also an icon. She's in so many. I, I liked them together a lot in that show. Yeah, so good. I'm sure she made a pretty penny off that show. So she's doing. But like just romantically, fine. is she okay? Because you remember, oh. is it like Chris Pratt? Like yeah, Chris leave Pratt her, left her and like kind of doesn't acknowledge their son. Like he does his other kids or because I think the son is like special needs mm-hmm. and he kind of like there's these rumors that he like ignores him and stuff but i think he later like said that it wasn't true and that he i don't know just... i think he like had miswording i think one yes, time he said that like he had another baby and he's like it's nice to have like a full normal baby yeah or something. it was something like, weird but also he kind of yeah i don't know that situation but they were period for so long it's always kind of sad when you see someone like start a whole new family with someone else it like breaks my heart even before I had kids or anything, I still was like, God, that's like so sad when you just like, I don't know. I don't know. There's some people starting a new family. I get it not working out, but like having kids with, I don't know. It, it would break my heart. Like if we ever got divorced and Moses had like a whole new family with someone, I don't know. I'd feel really sad. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I can't even picture it. I can't even imagine it happen. I guess it happens. I mean, I guess that's life, but. Blended family kind of. Yeah, vibes. I guess it's yeah. normal. And and we do. I have a half sister who I like I, I love. Like she doesn't even feel like my half sister, but yeah, it's tough. I don't know. I feel like feel sad. Like especially that one, because it's like they were together for so long. Yeah, and she was with him before like the glow up, you know? Oh, like yeah. when he was just funny. <laughs> I, well, that's kind of what it is too. It's like they get yeah, like you said, they kind of get glow up, they get famous, and then they're just like, okay, bye. Kind of like um <laughs> Not the not I'm not the same club, but like uh, Meryl Streep is getting divorced after like 43 years, yeah. and they've been, I guess they've been separated for like six years. But I'm just like, and maybe again, maybe this is like such the wrong take. You guys, I know, will tell me in the comments, but I'm just like. At a certain age, aren't you just like, oh, let's just stick it out? Like, you know, like you don't want to die alone. You want someone to maybe take care of you. You, you want companionship. Like, you know, I don't know when he's like, I don't know. I think Meryl Streep's in her 70s. Like if you're 70, I'm not going to be like, I don't know. I wouldn't want to leave you. I guess if you're the one that wants to leave me, but I wouldn't want you to leave me either. Because I'm like, no, I need someone to like, this is the time when we need each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm Even if this, you're not in love. Totally. And I, I would think the same thing. I mean, I think that I freaking like 30, I think. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Same. Now I'm like, we're not going to find anyone else. We're going to just stick together. Like we're too old. So. But maybe they just like are just happy being alone maybe. And also I guess when you're like that, like rich and like famous, I feel like you have more, there's more fish in that sea. You know, it's a bit, I feel like we're kind of in like a, pond puddle situation we're but in a for pond them, puddle yeah. yeah for them it's but like but it's like your 70s I mean the the sea becomes smaller especially true. like as like a woman like I don't know I don't know either And the, but I think reading like a lot of comments and like uh, quote tweets and stuff a lot of people think that too they're like wow like at that age like might as well just stick it out you know yeah okay so people do think that because I've I'm seen like, a lot of that the yeah. loyalty is also there you can kind of like trust them like Dolly Parton's been married since she was like 20 you know for like 60 years or something like that so she's in summers for 60 years it's like you have this like partnership that you know like other people it's like they're gonna I think when you're famous like you're always gonna find people that want to use you yeah for something money stability fame like there's always something like you know no matter and it, like, I think that's the curse of being famous like Britney Spears is like yeah there's always gonna be people that want to like use you for something and maybe they genuinely like you but there's also like the first reason of them trying to get to know you is because you're you and i feel like that with meryl streep i mean it's very rare unless you find someone who like just doesn't care like you said who's like a restaurant or something like that yeah like, doesn't care but it's the most bizarre thing to me when they do like jada pinkett keeps saying like divorce is not an option everyone's like it's like but why like it's like if you're just living separate lives anyways and you don't call each other husband i guess maybe money maybe money you're just so tied into yeah, it Yeah, especially with jada and will they didn't have a prenup so i'm sure maybe that has something to do with but their relationship is also just very unique they're for unique sure. <laughs> yeah. but meryl streep is to be like 75 years old and i'm like oh my god you're gonna get divorced like this is i don't know i also like i think a lot of people get married i don't know for me i'm like i don't want to like die alone that was my fear you yeah. know it's like being older and not having anyone to like because like hugh jackman too yeah hugh also- jackman. it's been <gasps> a year of breakups 
Oh my god. I know, but did you see the conspiracy theory about that? About no. him, why he's hanging out with Taylor Swift? No, what is Wait, it? Wait, what? She's gonna be a Marvel superhero. Oh, I mean this one I do know. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> I thought exciting. There was something else. Are you yeah. not excited about it? If it happens, it'll probably be like a super small, it'll be like a tiny little thing because Taylor can't act. She's not like an actress. So <gasps> what? Why would you say? <laughs> about someone you love so much that's my sister like i'm we have an honest like back and forth that's so, not true have you seen her act i feel like yes, okay, what I about her music her videos act. the bad blood video she looks very intense but and it's very like music when she's like has lines to deliver and stuff uh, wait what has she acted in she's had a few she's csi she was just in uh is it amsterdam i think it was amsterdam with like margot robbie Oh. And yeah, she was not. Just she like was random. in the giver. She's been having like random like movies for a couple lines, and she's not. Never well, really maybe good. they're not giving her the right part. Sometimes it's the script and not the actress. She's directing a movie, and I think she'll be a really good director. What is it? Um, it's like really secretive. They haven't said like what she what oh the project my God. is. But so she's gonna be directing, and I believe in that. But anyway, uh, it'll be a role in Deadpool, is what it's supposed to be. The with that Ryan Reynolds. Would be so. I don't know that movie, but I think it'd be so good. Like, <laughs> it'd be cute. The costume is cute because she's like she's like a disco pop singer. Yeah. yeah. So she would definitely fit the look. And I think it would be super quick. And I feel like that would be good for her. That's but. why they're all hanging out together. Because it's like, why is he talking about always with Taylor Swift? But Ryan Reynolds and her, I mean, and Blake Light, like they're best friends. Like they vacation mm. together. She, they like exchange, stay in each other's houses and stuff. So that's weird to me. What does that even mean? Like you can just stay in my house. Like here you can like stay she, in my house for the. Did you see Bradley Cooper and Gigi Hadid were staying in Taylor's Rhode Island house <laughs> Allegedly. So she kind of just hands her houses out. Yeah. That's weird. Like, that's such a weird thing to me. Like, also, like, they have their, they're huge and famous. Like, why don't they have their own houses? Because now Gigi Hadid and Bradley Cooper are like a couple, allegedly. Oh, so, what's the age gap? It looks bad. I it just... Well, and Gigi's last boyfriend was Leonardo DiCaprio. So, oh, yeah, that kind of no. says a lot. No, bad, bad look. So Gigi <laughs> is 28. Bradley is 48. Okay, well, I guess that's fine. I guess. I guess. I don't know. Mm. I don't know either. I don't know either. I did not. I mean, I liked Gigi and Zayn together. Like, they were really cute together. They have a baby together, they have right? They a baby together. Yeah. Gigi's, like, beautiful. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Bradley Cooper, the photo of them together, too, the most recent one, like, Bradley was wearing Ellen underwear. Like, he. Oh, yeah. Did I you saw, see that? Which, right away. <laughs> that tells you something about your character because we all know Alan now has been not the nicest person in the industry. And that show has been canceled for a while. So how old are those underwear? I was yeah, like, first why, thought. <laughs> why I was wearing like, the Alan underwear? Yeah, especially your Bradley Cooper. Like, have some Calvin Klein's, like, you know. Right. Have a little MeUndies, yeah. All Saints moment, <laughs> yeah. the new ones. But he also was married for a while, right? Yeah, he was married to Irina Shake, another Instagram. For I mean, Instagram, how long? They have kids Secret. together? Yeah. She's dating someone else, right? She's She was dating Tom Brady, but for three months, and then they recently broke up. Wow. Could you yeah. just imagine going from, like, all these, like, hot, famous men? Like, that's... What a lifestyle. I couldn't even imagine. Like, I feel like it's something like, oh, that sounds fun. But I'm like, is it? Like, I don't know. Are they dating other people? Like, it's wild. And Bradley and Arena were together for four years. Oh. So it's not, for some reason, I thought they were longer. Yeah, like 10 years. Do they have yeah. kids together? They have kids, yeah. How many? I think two. Let me double check. And Gigi just has one with yes. Zayn. Baby Kai, I think. Oh, my God. Name. How old? Gigi Hadid's baby is three. Baby Kai. And then Bradley has one six-year-old daughter with Irina Shake. Okay, yeah. so their kids are close to the same age, Close-ish, kind of. Yeah. Hmm. What a weird couple. How yeah. do these people meet? Like, how do you meet? The, are they on Raya? <laughs> that's a good. I mean, also it's weird because so Tom Brady was dating Giselle Bunchen, and then they got divorced. Well, and, they were married for a long time, right? Oh yeah. Sorry, they were married for with like kids. kids. Yeah. Like yeah. They got divorced recently. Then Tom Brady went to another Victoria's Secret model, Irina Shake, who was dating Bradley Cooper, and now. Bradley is dating Gigi Hadid, who's also a Victoria's Secret model. Wait, Gigi models for Victoria's Secret? Yeah, for a long time. Her and Kendall. Oh, really? I yeah. never see them on the website. I'm always shopping on there. I never see them. I don't know if Gigi's a model for them in a minute, but they used to be oh. like the big like VS, like for maybe like since 2016, like around there. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. Okay, that's everything. Yeah. Oh, wow. So they just date models. I guess that's what you do when you're famous. You just date models. I guess, yeah. God, what a, what a beauty standard to live up to. <laughs> like to always have to be just perfect and beautiful, like... Can't, I mean, that would be so... I wonder if it's difficult for them or they just, like, enjoy it. You know, some people just enjoy it. I don't know. I don't know either. I guess it's also, like, a lifestyle. So they're yeah. just, like, in committed to the lifestyle. That's true. Point, they say, know? like, once you make the change, then, yeah. like, you know... Or maybe they were never in, like, a bad lifestyle because it seems like Gigi... I just I always remember that one clip of her mom, like, cutting the, the tiniest piece of birthday cake. <laughs> yeah. She's like, no, no, not that much. And then she's like, oh, are you really going to eat it? I'm like, oh, man. It always broke my heart. Yeah. Or I think there was another clip where she told... What show were they on that I see all these clips? Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Oh, they were on it? Yeah. 
Oh, because they're like, oh, like, don't play volleyball. You're going to have, like, masculine yeah. soldiers. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, that's wild to me. Oh, man. So I would have to think she probably has some issues with yeah. her body. Just, like, even though it's probably, like, perfect and beautiful, she probably thinks, like, in her head, like, I can't. I think I could be wrong, but I believe she's also, like, talked about being quote unquote curvier at some point like oh no in her career too like being a curvier model or whatever and i'm just like girl you're so skinny isn't that crazy how that's like in your brain is like well i'm just i'm just a curvy model now yeah. i'm like oh my god which <laughs> maybe is true in the modeling world i don't know like i remember america a model had a plus size model that was like a size six and i was like holy cow is that like plus size like yeah. that's it's wild it's crazy i don't know even mm. like growing up i remember like jessica simpson was like the plus size girl yeah those which jeans is crazy and she was and newlyweds and stuff like she'd be like so transparent about like eating sweets or whatever and she had like the lip gloss that you could eat too because oh, yeah. she was like the plus size girl who likes to eat I and know. she was like literally so skinny just had like hips you know? yeah like, literally <laughs> and some boobs yeah and like she's curvy and yeah i remember there's the dessert lip gloss i loved it so much i know that is weird that that's what they portrayed her and then she got really skinny yeah. with dukes of hazard and then the mom jeans came and i was like oh my god she's fat again it's, it's so, so in- bizarre i know the early 2000s were wild because like literally Literally, the people that they said were fat, like Bridget Jones, like all those things, you're just like, oh my god, like what? not a time for plus size girls, like no. oh my god. And then if you think that, you're like, did you didn't think you're curvy, which again is like you valid, like you know, you, maybe you do think that because of the people that are surrounded by you, but that's so sad. I, I don't know. And that, did like, you see the ginormous, the ginormous waitress? You literally read my <laughs> mind because I was about <laughs> to bring up Emily Blunt's interview. <laughs> I was pissed at first. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be hot topics. Me too. I was ready to come in guns a blazing. Yeah. I was like, oh, not at Chili's. No. no I, I was pissed. I was like, you don't go into Chili's. That is a place oh, of love. That is a place of judge reverence. Judge anyone in Chili's. Also, why are you in Chili's, Emily Blunt? Like, that's also like, what? Um, That was wild. That clip was going everywhere on TikTok. And she's like, our wait, our enormous waitress who got lots of freebie meals at Chili's. I was like, wait, what? Like, that was wild. That was hard pocket. I guess for context, it was 2012 yeah. when she said it and she did since issued an apology and said that like she can't she didn't have a good apology i will say like a lot of people's apologies are like what but she had a pretty good one but that's a wild thing to say even in 2012 yeah like i think even then in the clip of some british show like you, no one's like laughing so i think even then people are like this is kind of a weird thing to add to the story which you know what People say a lot of stupid stuff 10 years ago, so I don't hold it to her. But it's also, like, a weird out-of-pocket thing to say, like, even back then. Like, so that's your true colors. I went – so, at first, you see the clip. It was a viral TikTok clip from Emily Blunt, yeah, 2012, on the Jonathan Ross show. Like, a British, like, oh, yeah. late-night talk show, whatever. And, yeah, the clip, it, like – it's that's why context is, like, so important. Because it's cut exactly to where it's, like, she mentions – um this chili's waitress being ginormous <laughs> and then the host is like well nothing wrong with that like so you think that he's the good guy yeah right? so he set her up and he actually asked a question about like what was it like working in america when everyone's so big so no. he set her up in the full <gasps> interview yeah oh man that sucks i was like wow good for the interviewer to be like nothing wrong with that i was like yeah yeah because he said he literally asked her in the full interview you ever been to Chili's? When you go to Chili's, you can see why so many of our American friends are enormous because of the large portions. <gasps> so, so she set- was like our waitress, an yeah. enormous waitress. Yes. So he set her up in the full interview. But like, of course, oh, in, the t- no. in the cut that they did for TikTok, <laughs> it just seems like Emily Blunt out of pocket calling this waitress ginormous. Oh, so, no. Oh, no. Yeah. That's so awful. Yeah, that is the worst. Because I get it when you're like in the moment and it's kind of like you don't know what to say and kind of go with it or like whatever. But okay. Yikes. So, that's so sad yeah because at first you see the clip and again I, my immediate reaction was oh hell no same but also besides that i feel like the way that she was like the southern accent like the way that she was talking so slow it also made like her look the waitress look dumb or sound dumb which yeah. i also didn't like like y'all just made that up yeah like, no no i didn't oh uh, that's me yes i'm her. i'm like I think already, I say this a lot, but the British accent already is so, like, presumptuous yeah. and it's already, like, annoying because you're like, okay. But I think then you're talking about, like, Americans and when you – I don't know. It is – and Emily Blunt already is not, like, l- relatable. She's not yeah. likable. She's not someone that's, like, warm. And I think all of that combined, like you said, with the accent, the enormous – or she said ginormous, enormous. I don't know. I think all of that combined was just like, Egh. And then the waitress was just like – she she was having sweet even in the story. I'm like, oh, my God. Why are you just, like, making fun of this, like, random waitress at, like, Chili's that – And I was like, imagine being that waitress. <laughs> that's what I was saying. Like, she probably went home and was like, I met Emily Blunt. She was so nice. And here's, like, Emily Blunt. And like, oh, y'all here in town for – like, just making her sound so, like, dumb. I'm like – 
I don't know. I don't like when people like make stories or jokes or whatever at other people's expenses, especially it's, like wait stuff people. Gonna say. Like their jobs like hard enough, and then they probably get excited to see you, and then you just like make fun of them. Like that's yeah, so weird. I when hate you- anyone who looks down on like wait stuff, like anything in the service industry, like don't look down and like think, especially when they she the waitress probably makes as much in like a year that you made literally in like your lunch break. And yeah, like, you know. So that was my first. I had so many layers of like anger <laughs> yeah because you're just like what are you this entitled bitch like you're so like pissed at them and I, either way making that story i don't know this is another bad taste of british people in my mouth because <laughs> why is it that they look down i guess a lot of people look down on americans and i get it there's a lot to look down on us for but it's also like our weight and like our portions first of all our portions rock there's nowhere else in the <laughs> world that serves big cheesecake factory portions like we love them okay we're happy people because we eat but also like it's kind of body shaming like all of americans at once yeah. like okay like i'm sorry like we just we like to eat i don't know british people because like british people have their own physical flaws that people like make fun of and i don't think that's right either you know when people say oh they got bad teeth or something like austin powers that whole movie is so problematic, but, like, the fact that his whole thing is, like, him having bad teeth and, like, because he's British, it's just, like, that's wild. Like, just making fun of an entire – British people, again, have their own things to pick on minus, like, their looks. You don't have to, like, go for looks. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's always crazy to me. And so, like, when they, like, body shame, like, Americans, especially Jonathan Ross. I mean, he didn't look skinny. I, that's why – you know what I mean? Like, I, I thought that's why he was the good guy. I was, like, he's, like, oh, nothing wrong with free meals. So, it's, like, okay, he gets it. He's not, you know, in yeah, ripped they, shape. He set her up, which is, like, what she no. said was, uh, was – like obviously offensive but i guess it the context makes it not like so random and out of pocket because at first it's like why go out of your way (laughs) to like describe someone as enormous Mm -hmm. you know yeah no that's why i don't trust a lot of british people um i don't know i guess i could say this doesn't matter whatever but pierce morgan they like reached out to do like a sit down interview with me and they were like they said it wasn't gonna be like a gotcha style because i'm always like i always seem like debating people and i'm like oh i don't know like no they just want to sit down what was it babe like just sit down and talk about like your career or so, and I, first of all, I only know Piers Morgan from, like, America's Got Talent. So my first, like, reaction was like, oh, my God, this is so great. Then I, like, researched a little bit because my management company was like, well, I don't know if you want to do it. He's just, Then I kind of looked into his views. I was like, okay, he's kind of, like, not the greatest. But it was, like, a sit-down interview. He was coming here to L.A. Yeah, it would be in L.A. And just, like, wanted to interview me. It wasn't, like, a debate style like he does with people. It was just, like, an interview about my career. But it's so weird. But I'm like, why does he want to interview me? Nothing on his me? channel is that. Nothing Everything on his channel is that. It was for, like, a TV show or YouTube or something. And I was like, this is so weird. And then I ended yeah. up just saying no because I felt, well, he also is kind of like homophobic and stuff. He's kind of like a little bit transphobic. He doesn't like, like Dylan Mulvaney. Anyone who doesn't like Dylan Mulvaney, I'm just like, no, you know what I mean? Like anyone who has an opinion on Dylan Mulvaney when you're like a straight white guy, I like don't care about you. But I liked him on America's Got Talent. But then I'm kind of like, oh, he kind of seems maybe sometimes a little bit of a, I don't know. Yeah, because was- he just made, he made a very strong political like now all of his stuff is about politics even in culture is very political so i always get scared especially british people talking about politics i'm like i feel like this is gonna be a trap british people just feel like they're trapping me all the time like (laughs) celebrity big brother like everything feels like a trap if there's a british person involved it's like a trap and i'm always like (laughs) joella trap (laughs) well they're jealous you know they don't (laughs) what have you tasted their food? That's true. Have you been to England? No, never. The food no is wonder. atrocious. You know, they have the worst food ever. That's true. They come for the chilies, which is delicious. And I'm like, you all have, like, literally no food. No food. I literally lost weight in the Big Brother house because all I would eat is, like, the potato chips. I think they call them crisps, but they're chips, okay? They're not. Fries are fries and chips are chips. And it was it was wild. They couldn't eat anything. That's why I just wanted to leave that house so bad. But even the pizza they brought in, like, wasn't good. The Domino's wasn't good. Their McDonald's not good. Their eggs are, like, orange. Like, so as I'm saying, if you're going to come for other countries, come for other things you don't have to come for like their old looks british people are beautiful okay they're they're cute but everything else is portions or like fast food just yeah just have what we have okay i know i'm like why why are we getting attacked for this like there's so many like other things i don't know i try not to attack any countries i think all cultures are beautiful and i think our culture of big portion food is like what makes america america and i do eat big portions i think that's my problem we tried to figure it out the other day and i'm like i think it's my portions i think i have no portion control i just love to eat like large amounts of food at one time that's my problem too i like mm. being full but then after i'm yeah. too full then i'm like why am i so full you know it's like oh a my, whole cycle. that's me this every day this weekend i was just like oh i can't move i can't breathe we tried to go on a walk and i like could not breathe because i just ate so much food mm, we make really good fried chicken and so i was just like oh i can't move and we had potatoes and corn and i just couldn't move it was yeah i kind of stuffed myself a lot this weekend but yeah but emily blunt i think in general is just kind of like 
not likable. I don't know what it is about her. Like, she's just not a likable person, which doesn't matter. She's an actress. I don't think she cares about being likable. But sometimes those people shouldn't go on talk shows, I feel. Like, I feel like you should, like, Leonardo DiCaprio. Like, you should just act. If people like him just acting, I think the more you find out about his personality, the more you're like, oh, I don't That's like him true. as much. You know yeah. what I mean? I remember she, around Devil's Wear, Devil Wears Prada, like, she would do silly, like, little things sometimes in Hathaway. But, yeah, um, I don't know. But her apology, I did like. She did say, um, I just need to address this head on as my job was on the floor watching this clip from 12 years ago i'm appalled that i would say something so insensitive hurtful and unrelated to whatever story i was trying to tell in a talk show i've always considered myself someone who wouldn't dream of upsetting anyone and yet it happened and i said it and i'm so sorry for any hurt i caused i was absolutely old enough to know better yeah i I like it i like the apology because it is probably like you said context it's a long time ago i think i i had this rule there was someone else i was talking to about old tweets and i think like or old anything like if you said something like 15 years ago i don't think that should be held like accountable now unless it's something like outlandish and crazy but if it's something that was like i don't know especially fat it's so weird we watch home i talk about home Improvement all the time because we're only on season four there's season eight so we've been watching home Improvement a lot lately and there's and i love it i love it so much but everything is like fat jokes about his wife about like al's mom about her mom like even about the dad the other day someone's like oh dad like you're he's like what size are you he's like 34 he's like you wish or i don't know but the stuff they say about the mom constantly just making fun of her weight that she eats too much and i'm just like she's so skinny and it's so like so I think like back then people just call people fat like they always call Al's mom like a whale and uh, just like crazy stuff and you're like wow they really every episode there's like maybe three or four fat jokes and it's usually at the women's expense who's like so skinny and I'm like I guess back then it's just like people and I think that was a way to insult people and fat was just more there was something on I think it was that so Raven and it was like the hand sign have you seen that one which one where people obviously I'm not gonna do it but they do the hand to the chest to say like the R word in, oh and they, yes 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 and I know they did it about. all the time and yeah. they would do it and I, they did it on like that so Raven and I was like that's wild and like it was a really common thing and obviously now it's like so like mortifying and embarrassing but it's kind of like that's so gay like all that stuff like that you just like think wow people really so i feel with the fat thing it's kind of like that where it was okay at one point to just call people fat and like make fun of them for being fat and now it's kind of turned around where it's like that's not okay which is good you know because even jessica simpson everything it's like or that wendy williams clip that always goes around it's going on tiktok now it's like wendy williams is a fat whale (laughs) it's like literally i feel like that every day on my my show where i decide to show my entire body but um yeah so i always think of something like 15 years ago and it was just like a thing of the the times obviously like not okay but i don't think you should have to like hold that person accountable to yeah that. like that's something that is she shouldn't be like you know quote unquote canceled for it or like be drilled about it over and over again i think especially with stuff in the past it's like if you can acknowledge that it's inappropriate now and like apologize for it then and then also you don't have like a repeated pattern of doing stuff like that in the present. I feel like that's the big thing. Like yeah. how, who you are in the present now, like if you're still acting a certain way that is totally hurtful people, because now there really is an excuse. Like when we were younger, like, you know, social media and stuff was still new. So people, the, st- the people who would come out and said, you know, actually making fun of fat people is hurt offensive, making fun of certain races, certain like mental illnesses is offensive. It's because now social media and stuff exists where people can share their stories Right. And we can, like, hear from people how this stuff hurts or how it's offensive. Totally. But growing up, we only had, like, TV. And TV was, like, a singular point of view, you mm-hmm. know? That's all we had and all we knew and all we thought was okay. Yeah. But then once we hear from people who are actually hurt, it's like, oh, like – this stuff isn't okay and and that's the gradual you know change and wokeness yeah. you know which is like and that way it is good and like that's what's good about social media is like you know better and stuff and like you said as long as because there are people who are so wild and like say wild stuff and you're like okay you know better and stuff like that like matt healy and all those people calling people like women chubby like i think if you're like fat shaming in 2023 like there's something like wrong with you like there's something so yeah 2012 you give a pass but i don't know i think it's because it's that's the that's the worst part about the internet is then like these old clips surface and you think they're new or something yeah. you're like oh my god that person's horrible and it's just what it is. But people really came from Emily Blunt. They're like, oh, her punishment was she was in Jungle Cruise. <laughs> and that is the truth of that. That movie. That movie sucks, did you see yeah. The Rock's um, wax, wax figure? figure? <laughs> oh, my God. It wasn't like that bad. But then I saw Travis Barker's. I'm like, oh, Travis Barker's looks so good. Some of them are, like, so stunning. <laughs> But it doesn't even matter, like, the company, because I don't think this one was, like, Madame Tussauds or whatever, you know? But even yeah. Madame Tussauds makes mistakes and has some wild yeah. wax figures. <laughs> so I don't even think it matters, like, where they're from. But, yeah, The Rocks was, I think someone said, like, that's that's Mis- not The Rock, that's paper. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I love what people, the comments people have on the internet are great. They yeah. crack me up. It yeah. looked very Mr. Clean. It looked very, yeah. The Rock is, I know we all love The Rock. 
Well, no, we, I guess he got canceled from Maui too, right? Yeah. People were kind of like, whatever. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I never, like, we watched Jungle Cruise and, like, the movie. And I'm like, this is, like, not, like, his movies are just, like, not good. But maybe that's, like, his brand is just doing these kids' movies that no one, like, it's not necessarily good movies. Like, who was the other one? Oh, Jumanji. The remakes oh, of Jumanji. I never even saw those. Did you watch the original? Yeah. So good. I love the original. The new one is, like, a video game. It's so complicated and so confusing. And I'm just like, I don't know. It's kind of wild to me that they remake these movies and people like go crazy for them, especially with the rock. I mean, granted he's like rich and everyone loves him. I'm not trying to hate on the rock. I know we're trying to be positive, but (laughs) I just don't really get him. I guess the movies aren't for me. There's some movies aren't for me. It's almost like the movies are so like generic and a, just to appeal like to the as many ma- the masses as much as possible where it's like they'll do well but it's not like they're actually good yeah. a lot of the times you know? i wonder if he's like a good actor though like you know like you always wonder like these people who are in these kind of movies i'm like i wonder if they're actually like a good actor you know he was do you remember that movie the game plan it was like him and that little girl madison pettis no i never saw he it he was like a football player was he good? was good yeah but madison pettis that little girl she, well, she's grown now obviously but she was in the movie with Addison Ray. Um, oh yeah, the, the she's yeah. all that. He's yeah. all that. Yeah, we, that movie was kind of good. We watched it. Honestly, just kind of. An, I'm excited for the new one. The thing. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I'm so excited. My best friend wrote it. It's so weird. It's so bizarre to me because he's talked about that movie since I met him when I was literally 18 years old, and I'm just like, this is so bizarre that it's like getting made, which it is, is like out everything. So soon. I know. Like, and it, they filmed it in March. Like, they filmed it so quick. So I was just like, wow, what a quick turnaround for that. It's insane. I know Eli Roth is the director, and he's also in the Idol. <laughs> So when I saw you like Roth and the Idol, I was like, oh, oh my god! Like, to me, that's like the biggest. I was like, does he know the weekend? Does he know Abel? Which, by the way, oh, maybe we talked about this last week. I keep talking about this. To everyone I see. Did you know there's a maze right now at Universal Horror Nights of the weekend? Oh, it's still there. Yeah, it's here again this oh. year. I want to go, but I don't want to walk through. I'm scared to walk through the park to get there. Oh no, I'm going on Wednesday. You are? Yeah. You're not scared? No, I th- I love. It. It's so silly to me. I get oh scared, my- but then I laugh because oh, like, <laughs> it's, it's so silly. I would like have a heart attack if I had to like walk through the park like no, the scare it's, actors it's different now it's like i remember in high school i was afraid because the actors would like follow you and stuff like if you went to like starbucks they would follow you in a starbucks yeah but now they're designated into like specific areas oh. so you can kind of avoid them yeah it's not really that bad i don't think it's not that serious i want to go so bad moses has never been i told her just close your eyes follow me yeah and it's fine he doesn't get scared at anything yeah no. and if you don't give a reaction they kind of just move on but i do i get scared when i see moses <laughs> coming into the kitchen i'm like ah that's true <laughs> i got scared this morning he was feeding malibu in bed i like turned around like ah he's like it's fine because like i wasn't expecting her to be up and she's like sitting up and i wasn't expecting him to be up I'm like oh my god someone's in our bed i was like i get so scared i want to go to the weekend did you go through the weekend one before last year yeah oh you did yeah yeah, yeah. did you like it yeah i was saying, remember in line it was like all his songs were playing <gasps> And even, like, when you go through it, like, spooky versions of his songs are playing. But it's just, like, dancers. It's kind of, like, fierce because it's, like, you know, dancers and, like, his mask popping out. It's nothing, like, too... It's not scary, right? His isn't very, like, gory. Some of them are, like, gory. His is just, like... Does he reach out and grab you? Yeah, it's, like, different... It's, like, the big costume. No! Yeah. And they, like, like, there's people like him? Yeah, they're all in, like, the you know the The prosthetic And, like, masks of him. (gasps) And, like, wearing his outfits. You would actually love it. You'd probably, like... (laughs) Uh, That sounds like heaven! When can we go? Should we go Wednesday night? Why does he have a maze there? Why is it every year? I don't know. I think it's recent. I want to say last year was the first year or something. I mean, it has to be recent because it was all, it's like blinded by the light. And that song's not super old. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. That's a Max Martin song. I didn't know. I was like, that makes sense. I was like, that's his biggest one, right? I think, yeah. He closed the Super Bowl with that. So I assume yeah. that's his biggest. Um, Not to be a pick me, but it's not my favorite song. I feel like that's one of his like <laughs> least favorites. You know what I mean? I Sometimes I think when the popular ones, and I'm like, I truly don't love that one. To me, it sounds like a Ford commercial because it's not even like catchy where you can sing like i don't even know what he's singing he's like Ooh, na, 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 na. like i don't even know what he's saying what's it about we googled it i was like we were trying to figure out you know what it's about <laughs> not that anyone cares but think, do you want to know we googled uh, it yes last week <laughs> i think it's about like being blinded by lights <laughs> What kind of lights? The lights of the, the the busy night sky, like LA. I think LA cars. Oh, buildings. Yes, close, you know, downtown. Yes. Okay, yeah, it's about him being like high and driving to someone's house for a hookup and being oh. blinded by the street lights. Oh, okay. Honestly, That's relatable. Close. I was telling Moses, I'm like that definitely had happened to me a couple times, and he's like, I don't promote it, neither do I. But like. I get it. Like, you know, you're, it's, especially at nighttime, it's like so blurry, everything. Like, the, the stoplights, like, like almost go like, like that. You know what I mean? They're kind of like horizontal. <laughs> and I was like, wow, I love that so much. I want to know, like, what I can't feel my face with you is about. At first, I thought it was like ecstasy, but then like, maybe he's laughing so hard and he can't feel his face because sometimes that happens. We just laugh so much and I can't feel my face. That's my favorite. I know that's one of his mainstream songs. And that's one of my favorites. But then he would say, I can't feel my face when, when I'm, I'm with, with you because yeah, I'm a- laughing. 
Because I'm laughing. What does he say? I can't tell my face with you. What does he say after that? I'm you don't know? What's he say, Because I love it. God, okay, we can fan over here. mean laughing, though. Like, he loves laughing. Yeah, he loves to laugh. Yeah, people say that. Like, I can't feel my face. Like, I'm laughing so hard. Yeah. So, hmm, so I just think that. Laugh. Another reason you have to go to Horror Nights. There's one section where it's just hot. It's like shirtless guys walking around. What? It's like hot shirtless guys walking around. What are they wearing from? Wearing little masks. I don't know if they're Purge or something. Oh. But I was like... Okay. I kind of live for that. That's everything. 80% of me is like, I'm intrigued. But the yeah. other half is like, straight men, like, walking around shirtless with, like, pretending to be, like, violent. I'm like, that seems like a recipe Problematic. for Problematic. Yeah. yeah. Are there so, kids that go to you know, Howard Nights? I think there's an age limit, I believe. Because, like, that's bothers me when there's, like, little kids there, too. It's also, I, like... I think if you're under a certain age, you have to be with, like, a guardian, but... Yeah, because it gets some of it's pretty graphic. My irrational fear when I was younger going into it is like Horror Night seems like a great place for an actual like serial killer to and that's like. That's what I you say. Know. Yeah, it's like the Scream movies. Like the second Scream movie was like they like basically like reenacted the first. Like they're trying to like yeah. copy the first. I was like, no, thank you. I, like that seems like a recipe for disaster. Yeah, that's what I was always scared too. I'm like some weirdo or even the scare actors themselves. Like some weirdo will be a scare actor and then just try to be a secret killer. Yeah, yeah. that's why I was always like so scared. I would love it if there was a secret able in there in the weekend maze <laughs> <laughs> like he was actually there singing that would be good i want to go why do they make it downstairs that maze like you know this should be the first one you go in so that way you don't have to like go <laughs> yeah you do it's a little bit of a track oh. yeah but it, it's worth it do you do I the think. tram ride yeah i do like the scary tram ride that's too. so funny and it's, it's just you and your boyfriend you go with a group just me and my boyfriend okay. yeah it's so unserious it's it just makes me laugh it's so silly i get scared but it's also like it's predictable like i know when it's good i also like have conversations like i try to rationalize with them i'm like i get it i see what you're doing i appreciate oh, you talk to them? i talk that, back to them but does that take it out of the thing but it's a way for me to like cope with my fear i think no i get that but i would be like this person's annoying like we're oh. trying to scare you you know <laughs> what i mean like stop oh if you were the actor yeah, oh, yeah, I'd be yeah. Like, okay well just, just scream bitch yeah you're supposed to go moving. with the go with the scare bitch, just scream and keep it moving yeah <laughs> I'm sure oh my god you would be that person that's like Okay, I see what you're doing. That's scary. <laughs> I accept it. I respect it. I like respect your craft. I respect it. But I'm going to but... keep it moving. Yeah, that's like, that's the way I get through it. I would be so scared. Because you kind of know, like, when you're going around a specific corner, I'm like, I, I, someone's going to come out from here. Oh, I can't. Oh, but God, it sounds so bad. I'm, you, I want to go just for that. Maybe we will. Like, maybe we'll figure out a night. You have to do it able. Oh, man, that just would be. Just be quick. Then go eat at City Walk some, what, mm. Maggiano's or something. No, they don't. They have Maggiano's oh, no, there. de Peppo. Oh, yeah, we some, love a Buga yeah. de Peppo. Actually, you have a half off a dessert for your birthday. <laughs> they sent us a coupon in the mail. I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> they should give. Maybe it's a free one. Maybe they give you a free. Maybe it's not even half off. I think you get a free, like, brownie sundae. I lived for buka. Before I started cooking my own food, oh my God, I would eat buka for like three meals. Like I used I to live across from City Walk and I would always, what would you get? I love a chicken parmesan. Chicken parm. I love a chicken parm. I love a garlic bread. I love a spaghetti. I'm getting so hungry. Oh my God. A big ziti. Mmm. They're spaghetti meatballs. Oh my God. We could, I have pasta every single that day. Reminds, so have you seen all these viral like Olive Garden TikToks lately? No. <laughs> it's like you can buy anything you want like if you ask like people are buying like the cheese graters at olive garden now wait why what they, they're just like how much <laughs> they're not bougie so, they're like these white I know. plastic things basically like this one tiktok went viral of someone who used to work there that's saying you can literally ask for anything you want here and just ask how much something costs mm. and we'll sell it to you i would take so, the salad bowls they're I huge should, you should ask you should I do love an experiment those. it's such a big salad bowl and they give you such little salad in there <laughs> <laughs> and i was like this is so weird he loves the super toscano is that what you get Love their soup and salad. He always gets a soup and salad. I'm like, okay, skinny. I get like literally. No, in, what in I get the fat meal, the meal. <laughs> So good. He rarely gets pasta. It's I, the unlimited pasta right now. I know. Never any pasta. Well, I have seen those on TikTok where the girls yeah. are putting in their purses. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, I think you could just ask and they would like give yes, it to you, right? Yeah, totally. I get some basic things. So when I go out to eat, I literally get like rigatoni with like Parmesan cheese. But it's so good. I don't know why I like it out. It's so delicious. The perfect segue though. <laughs> Speaking of food <laughs> and British people, do you see Millie oh. Bobby Brown? Her hot take on no. people who take photos of their food. Oh yeah. Okay, <laughs> she's an adult now, right? She is. Okay, yeah, I don't she's want to come for like a little kid or whatever <laughs> like that. But yeah, that's wild. Okay, was she being serious or was she being? I think cheeky? she was being for real. Okay, 
this is what I'm saying. British people be blunt, like Emily Blunt. Emily. Um, like they really are. They kind of just say whatever, and they have the most wild takes. Because okay, my biggest issue is when people have takes like this. Like it's like the baby name thing. It's like you know I told you about this before. When people like are so pressed about someone naming their baby something or what people do with their time, with their food. Like when people are pressed about other people's like how they spend their time and what they do is so crazy to me. And of course the whole thing now is like you get food, you get excited. You want to take pictures of it. It's beautiful. It's exciting. I mean, that's just the age we live in. I want to see what you're eating. I want to be inspired. Maybe I want that to eat. And I do. I get inspired by everyone posting their food. So for her to be like, mm, no, like my food does not come, like I, I eat first, like I don't take pictures of it. And did you watch the clip? Like what's the yes. context of her tone? I guess I didn't see the tone so of it. So it was basically about what she thinks is cringe. Um, and she said, I do not take pictures of my meals. And she, that's the thing too. She was wagging her finger around a lot too. Like she was so passionate about. <laughs> that's why I thought it was like a joke. Cause I thought she's like, I do no, not do that. No, she was serious. She said, I, that's where I draw the line. My camera does not eat first. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think it's just ridiculous. Put your phone down, eat your meal. I don't actually even think I have one picture of a meal ever. Oh my Never God. Never have I ever taken a picture of my food or drink. Maybe cringe. she hasn't been to an Olive Garden. <laughs> She I know, doesn't my eat girl, good food. Are you eating, like, the artistic, like, beautiful-looking foods? Like That's wild to me. It also takes you one second. When people say that, I'm like, it takes you literally a second. It's like, not like a photo, like, lighting, hair, makeup. Yeah. Like. <laughs> like, you take a photo, it takes two seconds. And I'm someone who wants to eat and scarf my food as fast as I can, but it takes two seconds. Like, yeah. And it makes people happy. Like, that's so weird to me. I guess she was asked her cringe moment, so she's like, okay, I'm going to tell you. Like, what would you say is a cringe? If someone's like, what is cringe to you? The straight guys who go around try to set girls up, like, they'll interview, they'll ask a, a girl a question, trying to set her up to look stupid like what um, like i saw one viral one where it's like a guy uh, it was like a guy who had like abs or whatever at a beach and he and um had his tiny little ass microphone he wanted to go ask a girl a question <laughs> yeah. it was like curvier it was like uh would you date me or what would you rate me on one to ten she was like a four and she's like he's like what why i'm a ten she's like <laughs> Um, I just think guys who, like, walk around shirtless and asking what girls would rate them are, like, cringe. Okay. Like, <laughs> stuff like that. Like, that's me. Usually straight men who are trying to, like, set girls up to look stupid. Like, that's that's cringe to me. Yeah. That's what I would say. Like, I don't – I wouldn't come for, like, a ma- like a general thing that makes people happy. You know? <laughs> right. I get that. Yeah. Overall, people who do stuff like that on the streets are a little cringe yeah. to me. I mean, it's kind of like 2012. I mean, again, fine if you do it. But it's always a little weird. Because that's just like some of these people. I, I hope it's set up because I'm like, if you're just bothering random people on the street with these stupid questions, like, you're embarrassing. Like, stop it. Like, because some people are just like want to go to work they don't want to like be bothered and yeah. people are like with their freaking microphones and stuff like that i'm like or the people no the oh cringe i'll tell you the cringe is when people go through like fast food and like they like prank like well okay there's a couple there's two levels of it one you remember the one where they would like take the ice cream upside down they would like grab it the yeah. wrong way stuff like that and then this one's not as bad maybe it's sweet but when they like sing to the people in the drive through <laughs> and <laughs> it's so cringe and i'm like why and yeah. maybe they're just sometimes it's cute like a girl will just be like can i get a venti ice coffee or something but then there's some guys who just like started going "Eh." i don't know it's like and it's too long they riff a bit and yeah yeah. have you seen the one i don't know if it's the same guy it must be and i kind of live for him i don't know if he's serious or if he's just being a troll and i love both is he goes up to people and just sings for them and some people like love it like harry like he goes up to like the famous people like demi lovato he did i think jada pinkett his name is harry i forgot i've seen him on like social media, yeah. I kind of live for him. Do you think he's trolling? He'll he's one hundred percent trolling. One hundred percent. People are so nice. Though. Some of them are so nice. Like, okay, that was good. And then yeah. some people are like, what was that? Like, it's so. Like he comes across very earnest. Like you know, he thinks he's you know very talented, and this is a big break. But like he's trolling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's like, can I sing to you? I want to say one. Someone did it to Ed Sheeran or something like that, and Ed Sheeran <laughs> was so nice about it too. And I was just like, oh, I love that. It's that great. would one hundred percent be you if like someone came, if he came, was like, can I sing for you? And he sang freaky. You'd be like, oh my I, god. Oh, I would live. <laughs> oh my god, I'd be like, yes. Like I would think that was so good because to me, it's like he has like passion about it. I know I would love someone to come on the podcast and just like do a duet. That's like my dream. Who was it that we saw? And I was like, that's like my dream. They just started singing. Those talk shows were like in the car and they're singing and stuff like that. No, God, no, that's cringe. James Corden. <laughs> James Corden is the universal cringe. He's just <laughs> yikes. Why? And every movie he's in, Emily Blunt and him and Into the Woods, the most cringy thing. Oh, I never saw hey, that. Hey, 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 hey. I'm sorry to be a hater today, but that's the one thing I hate more than anything in the whole world. Like more than Rachel Zegler and Snow White. Like more than anything in the whole world. More than anything. I hate James Corden and Emily Blunt and Into the Woods. It's awful. The baker and the baker's wife. It's mortifying. It's atrocious. <laughs> it's, I don't know how that happened. Into the Woods is classic musical. And now when people bring it up, I just think of that movie and I'm just like, I'd rather see James Corden in a cat suit than see that. I'm like, that was just, 
I can't believe you've never seen it. Oh my God. No, I remember Watch that it. Anna Kendrick, right? Anna Kendrick, she plays Cinderella, I think, in that one. Is Meryl Streep in there? Meryl Streep was yeah. the witch. It has a good cast. Uh, uh, but James, like, I can't get past it. Like, James Corden and, like, Emily Blunt, like, uh, kind of do the intro. And it's just so bad. And the baker and the baker's wife has such a huge role. And the, I just, I, oh, my God. It's it's horrible. Oh, my God. Like, actually, I think I blocked that out. It almost feels like trauma where I, like, blocked <laughs> it out of my mind. I, like, thinking about it now, I was like, oh, my God. I remember just, like, literally just getting, like, just, I don't know. I couldn't, like, fully function after watching it. Horrible. Have you seen it? No. No, we haven't because it's <laughs> yeah. terrible. Because you said something else with him and it was bad. James Corden. Cats. Everything he's been in. Poor James Corden. I mean, I feel like he's talented. He's one of those people who's, like, talented and just, like, it misses every time. Yeah. And why? I think it's just, like. Because he's not in character. He always himself. That It's sometimes hard to see past. That's the thing. Was it Cinderella? Yeah, I it with Camila Cabello. Wait, what? Cin- Wait, Cinderella, what? Right? Is that what you're saying? He's there, yeah. yeah. Even that small role was that. Oh, like, he know. was in that? We watched yeah. that, yeah. The Who Amazon was he? one. One of the mouse. Oh, he was the mouse. Yeah. Oh, my God. How awful. Why was he so distracting in every scene That's the only thing in? I remember from that movie. Poor thing. Yeah. Oh, God. But I heard he's like... Allegedly not nice. He doesn't like tip people or he's rude to wait staff oh, or something. Oh, yeah. There was something where he didn't. He had some scandal with like a restaurant. I forget what that was. <laughs> he was like mad or something. He didn't yeah. see them or something. Yeah. yeah. I would love to take over his show. Who's to, who's on his spot now? Do we know? I don't know. I don't know. He sang with Adam Lambert. Oh, he, maybe that's what it was. He would sing with like, maybe we were talking about that. Like I'd want to be his talk show because he would like, Adam Lambert would come on with Queen and it would be like, James Corden would just insert himself as doing a duet with Adam oh, Lambert. And I was Jimmy, just like. Jimmy Fallon does that a lot too. Yeah. yeah. And it's like a little cringe because you're like, oh my God, just let them have their moment. But I guess if you had your own talk show, I guess I would do that too. I'm like, let's, <laughs> let's just sing. Oh, you're, let's, let's do this. Like it'd be so much fun. Like, I don't know. Britney Spears would be fun. Let's uh, just sing. Yeah. I kind of live for that though. <laughs> if I was a girl with the hair, you could not stop me from playing. I've been playing with the whole like two I hours. Know. I love it though. It's, it's fun. beautiful and it's like long and front. I never have the long pieces to play with. It helps with like my ADD. I think. I'm like, yeah. Do you have it? God, everyone yeah. has ADD. I don't, should go get if I've checked out for yeah. ADD. I don't think I do. Uh-huh. I have no trouble focusing. I guess this is a good seg to um, your scandal of the week because <gasps> I have this- a scandal this week. No, I don't. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Sophia with an F. Sophia with an F came for you this week. (gasps) Okay, wait. No, my stomach did drop when I saw this. I was scrolling my FYP page and it dropped for a minute. I saw me and I was like, oh no. And then I saw Sophia with an F and I was like, I love her. And I was like, okay, I'm going to watch. And then my stomach dropped so fast. This was yesterday. I even texted to Moses. I had a little bit of a panic attack. I had a little bit of a panic attack. Cause I actually like live for her and I actually like feel, I was like, Oh, we're going to do a pod swap. Like, you know, she has a very popular podcast. We're going to, we have a lot of the similar guests. Like she seems like she handled, I was like, so excited and then I wasn't and then my 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 heart dropped oh my god is this a scandal is this big news or no like should we talk about it or is it not that big of news I think I mean I don't think it's like big news I don't think it's humongous I think it's I think it's something that can be easily resolved I would say it's not like I think it's more of like a miscommunication (sighs) maybe on her part like I guess let's start from the top in case (sighs) ICM ICYMI in case you missed it um (laughs) so there was this viral sound from Sophia with an S podcast that I saw Everywhere. Everywhere. Everyone was stitching it with Kalani Hilliker. Yes. From Dance Moms. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were having a discussion about mental illness. Mm-hmm. And their take on it was, you know, I'm thankful for my mental illness because it kind of makes me who I am. But it wasn't even that. It was like, I love my mental oh, yes, illness. Yes, yes, and yes. so that's why I was like, okay, wow. Like that's. And I saw it everywhere and I like didn't reply for so long because I was like, okay, it's cute and it's a cute way to cope with it or handle it. Like, you know, making jokes about it or uh, you actually loving it. But I was having a down day. I was having a down, a down day. And I do. And I don't talk about it very often, but I, I get some. I get some where Moses knows too. Like I, I have a really severe mental illness and a personality disorder, which is really hard to manage, but I manage it pretty well. But there'll be days out of nowhere that it just like I lock myself in a closet. Like I can't. I, and I lock myself in the closet because, you know, I have a daughter and obviously don't want to see her, her to see me cry or anything. That's why I like lock myself in a closet. Like I don't, I don't know. It's very weird. And so I was having like one of those days and I was like, oh, you know, and you see stuff like this and you're like, God, I wish I could be these people who like love it that can, because they look like they're functioning and I'm seeing something surface level on a podcast, right? You're like, oh, you see these like beautiful girls and they're functioning and it's just like, oh my God. Like, you know, so I was just having a bad, like a down day. And like the way I deal with stuff always is TikTok. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I should put a message out for people who like, don't feel like this all the time or don't feel like this at the moment. And maybe they don't feel like that all the time, but it's like, I kept seeing that clip and I was like, let me just like stitch this. Cause I talk about mental health a lot. And let me just stitch like how I'm feeling about this because like, 
And I, I did make sure to start off like right away because I think whenever someone stitches, like it's really important. I love when people say like there's no hate to these specific people because I wasn't. Like I love Sophia and I didn't really know the guest. I know she's from Dance Mom, but I didn't know her. So I was just like, oh, like I would never, especially like girls coming for girls, like never that. So that was my first thing to start off with. It was like no hate to these people because it's like not even about them. It's about like what – is happening with me right now watching this, you know, because you see someone dealing with their mental illness and they're like, they're, they're doing it. You know what I mean? And it's like, I was just not doing it that day. I was just like, this is like, it's really, really awful. And so I'm like, it's okay to not love it because mm. I hate my mental illness. And the fact that I still can't fully grip it, the fact that I still lock myself in a closet for three hours a day is like, not every day. This happens like once, you know, this happened like three times since I gave birth and maybe mixed with postpartum. It's like, oh man, I really hate that this is something that I live with forever. And it's like hard for me. Like I know in the moment, like I, I want to get out of it. And I like hate my mental illness more than anything. Like I hate it. So it wasn't even a trigger. It was just something like, oh, it's okay to not love it because I see this more. It's not Sophia. It's not just any of these people. Like so many people talk about they love it and it's and it makes them them and that probably that can be true and I think it's cool that mental illness is like normalized that like these beautiful girls have it these you know people that have normal functioning lives have it I think that's great and that's my stance too is like you can be a mom you can have this life you can do a turnaround and feel great but um but it's it's a, it's a bold thing to say I love my mental illness so I was just like let me just say it from the perspective of like I really hate mine and that's like okay too you know what I mean mm -hmm. So anyways, yeah. Con so yeah, I saw this. Go ahead, continue. And I was like, oh my God. I was just like, oh. So first of all, I almost was going to stitch back and I was just going to be like, I almost couldn't leave a comment, but also I don't, you know, sometimes comments get misconstrued or you can sound like you're being condescending. And I didn't want that because I really was going to like apologize because I was like, she obviously like either really hated what I had to say, really hated me or really just got on the de defense, which I totally get too. Sometimes you don't even watch something and you just get on the de defense. So I really was going to like apologize to be like, I Maybe I shouldn't have stitched that. Maybe I should have just said my piece without stitching that. It's just I just saw it over and over on TikTok. So I was like, this is like a thing to stitch. So I really was going to like apologize and like tell her like it was not. And the, Sophia, if you're watching this, like clip it, whatever. Like it was never about you. I actually like love, adore you. I always like I always talk like positively about you. Like the Aubrey O'Day interview was wild with you. Like you handle yourself really good in situations. And I'm like the fact that you like – did a spinoff after Call Her Daddy and that whole thing. Like, it's it's amazing. Like, I love you. So I was like, and I love that you love your mental illness. I love that you talk about mental illness because you are like a, a conventionally beautiful girl and you're talented and successful. And like, that's, I think, great that you talk about it to show that everyone has mental illness and all that stuff like that. So it was never like an attack on you. Like, I'm so sorry because when I saw this, like when I tell you my heart went to my stomach, like my, I literally felt sick. Like I, I cried and I never cry. And like, it's not, it's not her. I'm not saying that she's being a mean girl, but it was just like one of those things where I'm just like, um, whew, like, I don't know. It kind of transported me back, um, to like, I think cause my hair is a trigger and this sounds like so stupid. It sounds so dumb. But when I was like a kid, like people made fun of my hair all the time. Cause I just never had like smooth hair. I never had, when we would when we would take showers and jam or go to the pool or whatever like that, my, you know, you'd have to dry your hair naturally because you don't have a blow dryer. And everyone's hair would dry like so silky straight. And mine was like very wavy and like textured. And people like made fun of my hair so much. And they would always say that specific joke. Like it looks like you stuck your finger in a, like a socket. I think she said something like electrocuted hair or something like that. And I don't know what it was, but I just immediately was like, gosh, you know, you think that you get to an age and like a stage in life. And I always talk about this being like in my mid thirties with a baby. And like, I don't really care what anyone says about me, but it's like, gosh, you know, that's, that's the attack still. It's like, you know, it's like, and it's like my weight I could handle, you know, people call me fat all the time, but it's almost like, oh, we're still at that stage where it's like, even if I was critiquing something she said, which I wasn't, it's like, gosh, like that's, that's the attack. And I just felt embarrassed because while most of the comments were like really nice and even Brooke, who's one of our upcoming guests, and everyone's like so excited for her to come on and she's great. I can't wait for her episode to air because she talks about mental illness. You know, she was very much like, this is, what, this is not what the video was about because she is friends with her and she's like, that's not what the video about. So to see people defend me was very nice. But then, you know, you see the other half that's just like, haha, this is so funny and haha, Trish is an awful person. And so like that part, I'm just like, gosh, we never really outgrow the mean girl stage I don't know maybe it was just like her in the in the moment defensive or whatever like that but I think that I don't know why that hurt so much and I just felt so bad and I like I said let me just comment so I can tell her let me stitch so I can tell her but I said either way it's gonna sound like 
the girls are fighting, which I saw like in the comments. And it's like, that's never my intention, especially now, especially with people talking about mental illness, especially with a fellow like female content creator. Like that's just like, so not me. So I don't know. It just hurt really bad. And the fact that there was like so many people that were like, thought it was funny. I'm like, God, we're really in this stage. And I guess for me and not to get, this gets so deep and it's really not even about Sophia. It's really just like the comment that like my daughter grows up in that way. And there's people that are going to make fun of like her hair. And so I don't know. It's just like something you... I don't know. You can't control. And I've had like postpartum hair loss. Like it's bad. I don't know. Oh my God. It's crazy. Um, and again, I, I think there's just like moments and there's like lapses and people just like get upset or maybe she just doesn't like me to begin with or whatever the case is. But, um, and because it was such an off day and then seeing that on top of it, I was like, oh, it was, it was a lot, but the comments were so nice. Like I do love, I do. It's so nice to see people like defend even people who are her fan be like, oh, the hair comment, like, wasn't it? Like, it's, like, one thing if you, like, didn't like the way she, like, talked about it or you took it a different type of way and that's totally fine. But so it's just nice to know, I guess, that there's people who, like, can see that because I just feel like, again, with, like, looks, it's just, like, there's so many things to come for me for and things I've done in my past, things that I say currently I don't always get right. And I'm like, that, I don't know, that really just, like, hurt me. And I'm like, I don't know, just, I don't know. And it, it again, I'm sure it's something said in the moment or whatever, but... I was, I was shocked. I was shocked. And I like, honestly, wasn't going to even talk about it. Cause I was like, Oh, I don't want to make it this like a thing. Cause I don't want it to be like drama, but it's just like, I don't know. It's so weird. And it's coming from like, another girl. I don't know. I just, no, I honestly think it's good to talk about it genuinely because I think when people see you vulnerable like this, it helps to, for like a sane person, it would help give pause before, you know, commenting on certain things because they see like the actual person. So there's like that element to it. A, and then I think it's also a good conversation to have in general because I think like mental – there's like – with mental illnesses, there's some that are very – like you can mask very well and there's some that you can live every day very well. But there are some – this serious conversation with this outfit is – okay. But, I know. I know. <laughs> same. Like why the Halloween episodes? But there's some that – are so serious or some that people cannot and do not live with or some that people have to be institutionalized for you know it's like such a spectrum and i get both sides a little bit because i have adhd and it, like once i got diagnosed with it and have been able to you know be prescribed and like live with it more like i do see like having adhd has in a way helped me because when it comes to like editing and stuff like the way I edit is because of like the way that I think like I'm everything is like super quick and that's how I've been able to be successful is because you know I kind of edit for that like attention span especially for like the TikTok generation you know mm -hmm. so with ADHD and stuff like it definitely has been helpful but when I was like agoraphobic and like couldn't leave the house without like physically being sick like I'm not grateful for that like that didn't make me a better person mm -hmm. that was like hard to overcome so it's so nuanced you know and I, that's why I was like frustrated and disappointed because I the way that you were saying it and you, I, I literally went back to watch what you said. I'm like, what did Trisha say? That was so yeah, I didn't know either. To be taken so out of pocket. And really, all you were doing was just giving the other side of it. Especially, I don't really know her content very much, but I've known from you. Like literally, mm -hmm. I would say like 60% of the podcast, you said something about Sophia and like how in a positive way. Like you would talk about her interview all with someone. Her interviews, I watch all of them. Yeah, and you use her like as an example a lot of the time too. Yeah. So also like to be a fan of someone, have someone come at you in a way that's just like so out of pocket and so like unnecessary. Also must add to like the element of being <sighs> like hurt and disappointed, you know? Yeah, I was, I was, that was a, that was a shock one. And I have to think like maybe they just, she just like didn't maybe like, she doesn't obviously know me, but like who I was before. And so like I get that like people like just not liking me so I guess it is just because like yeah you just like the person and like that but that happens there's been people I've been fans of for sure that like don't like me and stuff like that but it's just like oh I guess I just like I don't know I think it's more like the physical appearance thing I think there's one thing to be like I don't like what you said about me or this is not where I was coming mm -hmm. from or you know taking it the wrong way and stuff like that it really was just like a place of like I was seeing this clip over and over. There's a lot of people that love their mental illness. And I just like, I really, really hate mine word to the fact that it takes like three hours away from my being with my daughter. Or like there was a time there was a week away from my daughter because I couldn't get a grip, you know? And so I don't know. I just think, um, yeah, the whole thing was sad. And it's, just, it's such a missed opportunity because like instead of having an actual conversation of the two of you from both sides, she immediately took it to a place where you can't have a conversation about it because 
a personal insult. Oh, there was also so many people who stitched it with like jokes and stuff like that, that were just like, you know, that just kind of stitched the same thing or like had a disagreement with it or like, you know, said like, oh yeah, I love mine too. And then they would show some dark humor, like an urn or something like that of somebody. And it was just like, I just saw so many people stitch it. So I was just like, well, if I can do like a more like, Nuanced. yeah, cause I was just having like so many bad days. And I feel like lately there's been a lot for literally no reason. That's the worst thing. It's just like, Oh, I get in these moods and like, I don't know. It was like something that triggered it that whatever it was a month ago. It was just like me, like I was trying to make dinner for us. And I just like, I don't know. It was weird. I was like cutting onions and I was like getting frustrated with it. And I just like, I don't know what it was. And I just like locked myself in the bathroom and then, and then I started spiraling. Cause like he didn't come check on me right away. So I was just like, and then I spiral even more. And then I just, I don't know. It's like such a weird thing. And you like can't control it. Cause everything is fine. Everything is great. And then something happens and that's that's how I felt yesterday. I was like, wow, now I'm really going to just like lay around all day and be sad about this. And it's like, that's so not me because I do let things go so easy. And I, I get why people don't like me and I get why people make fun of me and stuff like that. And I don't know, there was, you know, there's one thing and then just like, I don't know, it just like really sets you off. And so I, because I've been in a spiral for a couple days and then that I was just like, you know, like I said, I think the comments helped like renewed some faith because they were being nice. They were her fans. They were being nice. They were being respectful. Like this is not the video. This is not what she was saying. And so my thought is either she just heard something different, didn't watch the whole video, thought I was attacking her or something like that. And I, um, I get that, but I am like, so sorry if you took it that way. Like the video really was just like my struggle with my own mental health. And I think it's great if you love your mental illness. I think it's great if you hate it, you know, it's just life. And I think it's, okay, there's an in-between because like yours is an in-between. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not. Mine's every day. I hate it. I hate that I have this. I'm scared my daughter will have any of these traits. And it's just, it's like guilt you feel. It's like, you know, and you already already feel that as a mom when you have mental health issues. Like, is it going to pass on to my daughter? Is she going to see these signs? Like, and it's just hard. Like, it's just so hard. So that was my struggle. That's been my spiral. And I've been just, um, I don't know, just really, really sucks, especially because we have so many mutuals that love her, you know, Jeff and Tana and Brooke, they all really love her and stuff like that. So anyways, oh, there's that. But um, yeah, that's, you know, I am hopeful for some kind of, I mean, to be honest, like her leaving it up was what I thought when every, like, even when Brooke commented, I was like, okay, maybe she'll understand that yeah. it was just the wrong take to have. Yeah. Her leaving it up was kind of wild to me, but I am hoping for some kind of resolution especially hopefully she sees part of this but i will say not and this isn't like specifically to sophia i think in general like influencers currently taking criticism like look at with leah which we can get to a little bit but oh yeah i think when you're so in the sphere it's hard to like get yourself out of it and take criticism and definitely i get it to an extent because when so many people are coming at you aggressively with you know, you misspeak or, you know, you kind of fumble your words or something. It's hard because it feels very loud. Like it's like everyone, cause you know that you didn't mean it in a certain way, but it's being construed a certain way. And so many people are telling you that you're wrong or, or you suck and it can be so overwhelming. So I get it. I get why she would like get defensive and then want to like, kind of like lash out, you know? And like you said, so many people were doing it. So it was weird to like, like pick on this one this one take so i mean i get like why she'd be on the defensive but i think at the end of the day it's like you have to like fight that urge to like be defensive and to like fight back and actually take a second to like really think about the criticism and see what part of it is valid because for the most part if so many people are saying like your take was wrong or something it's an opportunity to grow and i mean on a smaller scale like that when you were in your weekend cosplay and you were like on the negative train and then the next week you came back and you read the you took the criticism and like took it as an opportunity to grow versus like you know this with sophia or with like leah <laughs> doxing you know crazy it's like yeah. if you take it as an opportunity to grow you end up winning you know it's like definitely because you prove people wrong and it's like an opportunity to better yourself and i f- wish that more people took like that kind of criticism and not all of it is valid but some of it usually is you know? yeah i think when you hear enough noise and i'm this is from my personal experience is like when you hear enough that something you did was wrong. Cause like for so long I thought like the two big ones always come to my mind is the trans video and the DID video. And for so long I'm like, but I didn't mean it that way. And that's not what it was. And then, then you're just like, Oh, okay. I can see why that came across insensitive. I can see why people, you know, when, when my first initial thing was trying to be genuine and then it got taken a wrong way. But when enough people tell you this is wrong, this is wrong. And then you're just like, you just have, you just see it. You just get it and stuff. And it helps. It always helps for me. It's always helped for the most part. Like you said, there's always some, but enough people are telling you like 
this is this is not right. And then like hearing it, and I I get it. I get being defensive. Trust me. Like my whole like 15 years online, I was like the most defensive person, especially if you don't mean it that way. And people are taking it the wrong way, and it gets frustrating and stuff like that. But um, I'm always thankful when people tell me I have a bad take or something like that, or you know you hear it enough, and you're just like, oh, like first like that one about the moms. You know, I was like so adamant that I'm like no, like I'm right. And then I was like I I see both sides. And you were trying to tell me that day, and then when I saw the comments, I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense how people say it so yeah maybe she just doesn't like read the comments or something and you know I don't know how old she is I mean she looks very young and so it's like you know it's like the brand of chicken fry situation that kind of stuff it's like sometimes you don't know until people say it me too when I was younger I used to say like the most outlandish stuff and you know I don't know but um yeah <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm sorry for my part because honestly, like I was like, maybe I just, when you know, you start rethinking it, I mean, maybe I shouldn't have stitched that. Maybe I should have just said my piece without having to stitch it. Um, but yeah, I know. I, this, this is the bad thing with TikTok. It's so immediate and so whatever. So it's just like, you just think, oh, it's fine. Also, you think like it doesn't matter. Like you said, so many other people are doing it. So it's like, it doesn't matter if I do it. Also, I know I'm like, can like ignite hatred in people just because of like people just think I'm this horrible person or they know me from one thing so I, I also get that too like I'm kind of like a jump scare where it's just like this person I hate this person and like I, I get it so I get it I respect it <laughs> but um but yeah it was that was it was a low it's been a little bit of a spiral for me lately so then when I saw that I was like uh and then I sent it to Moses and I'm just like I don't know what to do but I always that's when the that's when meditation comes in. I did spiral yesterday. I cannot meditate, but I try, I try, I try to just breathe. I just like lock myself in a room or something. <laughs> I just can't look at my phone either for a while. I'm just like, let me just not. Yeah. And I'm like, well, it's not really a big thing. I don't see, I don't, because I wasn't on. I just like ended up not being on my phone yesterday. I'm like, let me just not, let me just go to Spirit Halloween and look for a NASA outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we did. We went on a walk. We did go on a walk yeah. yesterday. That helped so much to go outside. But um, yeah. It's sad, but that's, that's life, you know. I feel like a lot of times there's a lot of people. That's why they say, not again, that, but don't, like don't meet your idols. Like Not to say her, but I'm just saying, you know, you meet someone and you think they're going to like love you and then they don't and you're yeah. just like. <gasps> well, I am very proud of you for how you handled everything. I think it's an important conversation to have and I'm glad that we had it because I think that it's at least, and when you don't have a certain illness or a certain, have a certain lifestyle, it's easy to not know that perspective and be ignorant to it and not understand it. And I think that this gives people a new sense of you know what it's like living with it and how it affects you and I think that's important so yeah I feel like with like mental health too it's like gosh I wish like I wish it wouldn't just like snap you know what I mean just like those those things and it's like wow people just sometimes live a normal life and they just don't feel like this you know totally but anyways any any chance and I I also am not like a victim ever like I feel like I know there's already a distaste sometimes in people's mouths about me and it's fine and my hair does not look great at the moment I have <laughs> postpartum hair loss and I've always had weird textured hair I don't know why it's never been silky smooth and um that's that so I live with it and I have hair extensions so <laughs> In my Taylor Swift moment today, today you cannot say that I look like I got electrocuted. Oh my god! It is silky smooth. Oh, so out of pocket. <laughs> it was so hard for me to like. Anyway. Yeah, it's it's wild. I get it. Like sometimes, like I said, I mean, I'm you know, you just you, but I, I don't know. Anyways, um, we still love. We there's no hate. I'm like her podcast as well. Her guests are amazing. It's hard for me to say out of that one, but where are we segueing to? Leah. Well, we didn't want... really talk about Leah, but I guess yeah. she got one video got demonetized. <laughs> Like you said, I didn't want anything bad. Like, it is awful to have, like, your whole livelihood taken away. But did you see she was, like, banavating? She was, like, uploading her uh, videos on her monetized channel. She was doing that? Yeah, you didn't see that? No, I didn't see that. Yeah, oh, so no. basically she took, like, her unmonetized video and put it on her monetized channel or something. I don't know. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Do you think her apology was sincere? <laughs> the hair is killing me today. I know. The it's part like... got lower. <laughs> the hairline's lowered. <laughs> so unserious i love it so unserious it's so unserious <laughs> um and i love just tossing it it's so fun no I'm you like... look cool i i love it actually the more i think about mosey look good like that when you're older <laughs> like fun. i love the white first of all she was saying jack's film instead of like jack films oh so she had a typo <laughs> she was saying his name wrong that was kind of... do you think on purpose jack films <laughs> i think she, i mean someone obviously wrote it for her Mm. And it came out like I think 45 minutes after YouTube had announced that she was being temporarily oh. demonetized. So it was obviously very PR y. Like there was definitely mm -hmm. like talks behind the scenes. So it was hard. And I know the apology got a lot of criticism because it was hard to really take it as genuine. I think especially because it was late. It was after doubling down and saying that she just wanted to talk. And it was an hour after YouTube had made mm. their statement and said that they're disappointed in both sides of, you know, 
That was kind of wild, right? Kind the of bo- wild. Because yeah. are they talking about him like making videos about her? Like, I is guess that- so. Oh. I guess like it's kind of weird to like lump the two together. Like, it's a very di- one's a crime, like an actual <laughs> crime, and then you know, so wow, it, it is hard to like equate them. I but don't- on both sides, is wild. That's wild. Like, yeah, and I get. I'm trying to like be, you know, have a good perspective on it. And like I said too, like I did raise the question, like you know, is he doing too much with like having a whole channel, like kind of spoofing Leah? But that it's just very, it's a different category. Very of different, like, yeah. It's just not the same thing to yeah. like put someone's safety at risk and then to you know be spoofing someone's like a channel like that. Yeah. Um. Obviously, like, we didn't expect YouTube to really do anything. You know, I didn't expect them to like deplatform her. Like, I think it has to be very, 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 very serious to be like completely deplatformed. Well, people said they have for the same thing. Oh, really? They for said they they've demonetized people for like less, I guess, like for oh. just like putting an address out there as opposed to like a whole picture out there. I wow. don't know. That's what I heard. I don't know. I mean, she makes so much money for them. At the end of the day, it's like they're gonna. Yeah. Which is, that's a commentary a social commentary on our world it's like whoever has the money whoever brings in the money is always going to win at the end of the day yeah. i think in life lawsuits anything if you go against a machine a company the corporation's going to win because they're the ones with the money i wonder i mean jack hasn't said anything yet he hasn't right i don't think so um i wonder if he's like doing something like legal because it's like if it's it's illegal in california yeah he definitely has a case or something I yeah think. lawsuits are so difficult because you like sometimes have to prove damages and stuff like that and it's like even if it, I don't know. I don't know how it works with that kind of thing, though. It's it's weird. Even like stalking or any of those kind of things. Like if you go to the police, like you have to prove that they like have physically like try to alter, like mm-hmm. harm you in person. Like it's crazy. Like someone could break into your house and like, well, if they didn't like stab you. Like you're fine. And it's it's weird. It's very odd. Laws are crazy. Yeah, especially it's like two people who are public and with money, you know. So and it seemed like yeah, the statement would just seem very like definitely. That, you know, formulated and pr and like i you know apologize to this it's like why didn't you do that beginning why did you you know yeah but maybe it was like everyone telling her she was wrong and maybe it's one of those things where she did learn where she's like oh you know what yikes because sometimes maybe you don't know i don't know maybe you don't understand the severity of it until everybody tells you i mean that was me for a long time like i feel like the only reason i even got into this spot is like i just made so many mistakes and i was so like naive and also like dumb like you know a lot of people thought i was like malicious back in the day but it's like i was just like just dumb and i didn't think about things you know like talking about your relationship or exposing someone or something like that you don't think about it as like oh you could like hurt that other person's life you know until you do and then you're like oh yikes you know and also like again literally you had an undiagnosed untreated mental illness that like severely impacted you too so that also affects like how you react and your judgment of things oh man situations that's why i say when i hate it i hate it because i just really did ruin my life on so many levels and other people and it's just yeah. like there is no excuse and there is no coming back i mean but i have to live my life i have to keep going like that's it there's no other option other than not to be living and that's not an option right now so it's just like all of that sucks i know that's why i get in my head and i spiral about this stuff because it's like you you work on forgiveness you work on moving forward and then like stuff happens and then you just start going backwards and you're like god yeah. i messed up my life i messed up moses's life i messed up my daughter's life who didn't you know like all this stuff because of something that happened 10 years you know so anyways yeah i feel the situation's sad i feel i don't know god it got so sad all of a sudden and now we're talking about Brittany too at the end and i'm sad for her speaking of mental illness freaking sherry shepherd oh calling my gosh her in 2023, this is one of the things where you're just like, it's 2023. This isn't a while ago. This isn't 2017, which, or 2007 when people called Britney crazy. Like, this is like now. She mm-hmm. called her crazy, crazy, crazy. And I was like, what is, what, how? What is like the mind process, the thought of everything we know about Britney, everything we've known about her? And you're like, gonna call her crazy? Yeah. And Sherry Shepard, of all people, she's like wholesome, family friendly. Like, what? And especially in the context, too. So she was with Issa Rae on Watch What Happens Live. And literally, it was, like, talking about her book. And the topic of her book came out. And then Issa was like, oh, I'm definitely going to read it. I'm excited. And then Sherry was like, oh, she's crazy, though, right? And so especially in the context of her book, to call her crazy is wild. Because she's talking about everything that has, like, having mental illness running her family. But then also just, like, being the victim of so much, like misogyny and being used by her family and just being like strung along and like mistreated for like 20 years abused by everybody the media the men her family her some of our own fans sometimes like everybody just like literally just like making her you know and the word crazy anymore that really should be like an offensive term it should be up there you know when people used to say like you know the r word and stuff like that like it's really like 
it's such a it's a condition you know like it's like it's basically making fun of people who have like something wrong with like their brain and stuff like that it's like this derogatory term and it's like to call people that in 2023 is like really wild especially another girl because like girls get called crazy all the time by men if they oh she's crazy or she's this or whatever to like dismiss them so it was really weird and like you said going through so much and it's about her book and also in that context someone's like yeah i'm gonna read her book and like but she's crazy right it's like what like what does that have to do with anything yeah. like if anything like good for her for getting the power and like the space to talk about this stuff that's like she hasn't talked about ever and she's like let so many people pass and like i really like sherry shepherd i was like damn like that's another one that like hurt my heart like that one hurt my heart a little bit because i was just like man like britney can't catch a break even in 2023 when people are like wow this girl's been through a lot and then you have to hear from her calling her crazy and almost like diminishing her stories then like oh well she's just crazy as if like her stories don't count her recollection doesn't matter i don't know i don't like that narrative and i feel like justin timberlake was one of those people who tried to paint her as like crazy and like all these people I don't know, Christina and Justin and like all these people that try to make her look some type of way. And Brittany, you look back at it and it's like she handled herself pretty well. Like, you know what I mean? Like considering all the stuff and the conservatorship, all the stuff like that, she's handled herself well. You know, as as far as the public goes, you know, she never had any like outbursts or anything like that. She never like lashed out on like people publicly, except paparazzi who like literally harass her and stalk her. Like, I guess at the time too, it's so sad, but Brittany was like not treated as a person. She was like othered almost because she was so like she was the pretty talented mm-hmm. like girl next door who like was kind of provocative with the music. It was almost like she wasn't treated as like an actual person when especially in reality knowing her now like she's just so like soft like she's so maternal and her personality is so soft and she's so sensitive and just very sweet and that's why the fact that she like never defended herself for like 20 years when she was being dragged to the mud and like this is her first opportunity to like and the thing is too even now like as she's yeah. saying her side of the story she's still like so kind yeah like she's like it's in the past i'm in the present yeah. i'm just you know it really is one of those situations again she's not attacking she's like telling her story like I had this abortion, like, it was so awful for me. And there's, like, there's no attack. She's, like, I loved him, all this stuff like that. It's, like, it's so weird, even with all the rivals, Christina, all this stuff like that. Like, she's she's not on the attack then or now. And if you look at interviews back then, she was always nice. When people would be, like, oh, well, what do you think about this? She was always so nice. She goes, well, you know, it's fine. Like, she's always been so nice. She's never once had the feud. She's never once, like, publicly attacked back. And Justin basically insinuated that she cheated on him, like, all stuff like that, Cry Me River, all these things like that. And just she took it. She took these, like, attacks over and over. Justin and Christina doing the tour and the, the cover together. And I don't know. Even lately, I think it was one, like, five years ago on SNL, Justin said something about, like, you know, pretending that they're virgins and – or, like, saying – telling the world that they're virgins and then really it's not. Like, it was some SNL skit. It's just, like, weird, weird stuff to say, especially when you, like, go through all that trauma with somebody. It's mm-hmm. – I don't know. And it's, like, it's it's her story. Like, I don't know. People – I don't know. People act like there should be a time limit on when you can share your story. I don't think there's a time limit. And I think it's just part of your – part of your life. And Justin, like, that's just – it is what it is. You made that choice with her and that's, that's what you have to deal with, you know? Mm-hmm. And really, it's what she has to deal with because it's her body that went through it. It's all her trauma and stuff like that. Justin kind of could just carry on and, like, live his life. But I don't understand that perspective because he also, like, hasn't had the opportunity because she was in a uh, conservatorship for so long. Yeah. She never had the opportunity to say, like, her side of the story, too. Um, And it's obviously something that, like, she has been a part of so many people's, like, childhoods. And she was, like, the biggest part of pop culture for the literally the past 20 years like the whole 2000s Mm -hmm. were defined by britney spears yeah so obviously like a lot of people would care about her story so it's very like sexist and ableist almost i guess like against like mental Mm -hmm. illness to like say that you know she's crazy you can't take what she says like Mm. as an accurate uh, depiction of reality or whatever because it it she's sane like she is sane now she n- understands what she's saying and it's it all looking back to at the timelines and everything it all makes sense and it all like adds up all you adds know? up the every time everyone's showing the every time video yeah. and stuff like that and i was like that's crazy you seeing her write the song seeing her talk about it and you like listen to the lyrics now you know like the baby at the end being born and you're just like oh <gasps> that's wild and she would like cry when she would sing it and talk about it and like everyone was like oh she's apologizing to justin in this and it's like no she's like apologizing to her this big baby that she sees in her dreams and she would like hug her boys after she sang that song like it's just like so wild and like no one knew that she was like going through that at such a young age and they had to do it in private and people were kind of telling her to do it and she she said i love justin i thought we would have a family one day it just like wasn't right then Mm -hmm. so like believing all that i think he broke up with her on a text it was revealed like on the set of her music video Mm -hmm. Which is also like watching – I only saw the visual of that with Katy Perry with the Russell Brand thing and I'm no huge Katy Perry fan. But I just remember like 
like sobbing over that too. Like, could you imagine like your whole world comes to an end over a text and you're just like trying to work and everyone else around you is working. So they all rely on you to like perform and yeah, I've always loved Britney for this reason. And she is one that we do care so much about her as a person. Like she's such an icon and performer, but there's so many people like that. Like Mariah Carey is like an icon and Whitney Houston, but it's like, you really care about Britney as like the person. I don't know. I feel like everyone does. I think it's like kind of universal at this point that like everyone just like really cares for Britney and is like rooting for her. Yeah. I think she's, like I said, such a staple of pop culture. Like she defined it for literally our, for like millennials, like our childhood. And even if like for Gen Z, for the younger people, her music is still like so iconic. And her story, I think is, it's so like, it's historic really. Like, cause it's, so she's such a product of like the machine, you know, like making a pop star and like running them through the round. Like it's such a story. And it's, I think- for generations to come will be like a kind of like example of the pitfalls of, you know, entertainment and of Hollywood and stuff. So it's like, it's very sad and it's very interesting. And it's, it's just sad that it had to be like her that had to like be this example. Like I always just feel so bad that like, it's someone just so, so kind, like had to, you know, be the person to like show the pitfalls of this and really change the industry. I think people look at the industry and conservatorships and child stars and pop stars so much differently now because mm-hmm. of Britney. I mean, she basically was forced into the conservatorship if she wanted to like see her sons basically. And she could, that's, and she said, she's like, that's like a trade I was like willing to make like my freedom for my, to see my sons. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's wild. And it, and it does, it, it is based in misogyny because it's like people like Kanye West, who obviously is like struggling and like the Kardashians will say it, people closest to him will be like, he has an episode. So he had this like stuff like that. He's not put into a conservatorship. He's just kind of like free to do whatever he wants or say what he wants. But my, meanwhile, Britney's like forced into this if she wants to see her children. Wild. Like you can't really like trust your family. You can't trust all that stuff. It, it's, and it's sad. And what's crazy too is Britney, like you said, still being the bigger person. She actually like apologizes to this Nickelodeon star that was on Zoe 101. Did Alexa you see that? Nicholas, yeah. Alexa Nicholas. And Alexa like... And I could, I could feel that relief, like, just on, I think it was her tweet or something she said, where she's just like, this means, like, the world to me, because Britney apologized to her in the book. Basically, she went on the Zoe 101 set, and she basically, like, yelled at her for something, like, like Jamie Lynn had said. A story that, like, not a lot of people know, and it was, like, so long ago, but, like, the fact that Britney's, like, apologizing in this book, this print that's, like, out forever, like, nine million people already bought it. Like, that says so much about Britney, you know what I mean? Like, that's, like, you're talking about this incident that happened, your sister obviously, like, lied or whatever got twisted, it was, like, this whole thing, and like apologize to this girl and like she and she thought she did she felt like the sense of relief and it's like no one's apologizing to britney like nobody even like christina like you know i like christina i'm not trying to there's no like feud or whatever with britney but like her you know jimmy kimmel asking about britney and i don't know just like being like snide about it and stuff like that like where it could just be more genuine i don't know she kind of was just like oh i don't know like i don't know about being in the book or whatever like that she was i hope it's you and not me or something i don't know it's like at 40 years old and like you know you're at different places in life you could be like man like I always, like, wish the best for Britney. Yeah. But. I will say, Christina, during, like, towards the end of, like, the free Britney movement was supportive and, like, spoke out of support of Britney, at least. Yeah. So, I guess maybe she was nervous. Although, it is interesting. I You would think, because they had such a rivalry, like, growing up, mm-hmm. but she Britney doesn't say anything about Christina in the book, surprisingly. Oh, she doesn't? Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought... Because I had, like, a list of names. I didn't... I haven't seen anything, obviously, about Christina, but that's... That's good. It, yeah, it was kind of surprising. But she... Talks about her very, very briefly, but it's oh. only, like, it's nothing bad. I think she talked about, like, how she went out with her. She wanted to be more like her because when they went out with their, they shared dancers. Mm. And when they went out um, clubbing or whatever, like, Christina got to be more wild, but Brittany couldn't because of um, everyone, like, you know, surrounding her and stuff. Yeah, I wonder if they, like, felt the competition. I want to this is just like outside obviously as a fan speculating i feel like christina probably felt more in competition with britney than vice versa just because i feel like in general people elevated britney a little higher i think yeah yeah. and then christina had to kind of go this other direction which i loved i loved like dirty christina i love like christina songs i like christina but from an outside perspective because i did kind of like both it always just felt like britney was like the winner and like that probably is like harder for you to hear is like Christina. I am curious because even when she talks about like the MT, like the VMA Madonna like kiss moment, she mm-hmm. doesn't talk about Christina at all too. And I almost wonder mm-hmm. if it's like uh, I don't know, just not like not wanting to. I think if anyone like Britney probably understands what Christina was going through like growing totally. up. Totally. So I, maybe that's part of it too, because like no one talked about Christina kissing Madonna. They only kissed ca- cared about Britney kissing yeah. Madonna. And I feel like yeah, to me that says a lot about Britney. Like you said, either one just not wanting to stir things up, but two maybe it's like 
there's no need. Like you're talking about the VMAs, you're talking about your experience. Yeah. There's no need because you don't know what Christina was feeling or anything. Or, yeah. I will yeah, say that the, the tax situation was great because the director actually like came out. I think yeah. it was the, was it Overprotected? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Came out and said what the text was that Justin sent Brittany to break oh, up. I don't think I know. It was just, it's over. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Oh, right. That was it. Which That's is like. crazy. That's crazy. And not to use that word, but it is wild that people i've had that happen with people that like you've seen for like three four years consistently and they just i had that happen and it makes it drives you insane and obviously they were public and they were in their relationship so it's a lot different which is like even more insane like i couldn't even imagine but that that alone really shapes you and like messes with everything your mental health who you trust what you know about people like how do you even deal like there's no in-person thing it's and to not feel it coming and that's wild that's almost like not to diagnose, but a little sociopathic to just be like, it's over. Three after years. You're like, three years. You're so public. Almost had a baby. Like, Almost, yeah. You know. Was like, pregnant. Like, Especially back in the, with the little Motorola razor. Like that, even just saying <laughs> yeah. like, it's over must have taken like a minute. But oh my <laughs> yeah, God. Yeah, the three, the two, the one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Like, at least call. Like, yeah. A text. On, well, you know, she's like on her music video, like whatever. It's like, in, anyways, telling someone in person bad news is just better. So you like get the state that they're in or something like that. It's. It's wild to me. That's wild. Justin, Justin's been the villain the whole time, which is crazy. Did you see that? Now people think that Justin Timberlake is using bots to defend him on Twitter. Oh yeah, but I mean, do you think that's real? <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of accounts saying the same, like responding to tweets and saying literally like the same exact like statement. What's so, the statement? You can always tell the bots based on like emojis and stuff like that. They use like the same emoji or it says two consenting adults made a joint decision. What was best for them at that period in their lives? I see no issue. So it's so They're like, all saying robotic. That same thing. It's the exact, not even like any nuance. Oh, it's all so the exact it's... same. But do you think it's Justin doing it? Or just like maybe someone on this I don't know. It's all such a conspiracy. Right, but... that's true. Cause like why what normal person would write that, like do a bot. I mean, people can do bots. Like I've had that for sure where people just like go spam something in the same comment and it's like it is annoying. But yeah. Those people like how do you do that? Does it cost a lot of money? I was like, I always see that when bots do that, I'm like, maybe I should do it back but the opposite. Like Trisha's the best <laughs> person ever. Like, I don't know. I wonder how you do that. Do you have to know someone or I you... have no idea. I'm sure there's like a service that oh. you can That'd be wild. That would be if that's his PR move back, like he should just acknowledge it and be like yeah, it was a sad time. I don't know. I'm sorry to Brittany because at the end of the day, again, it's her body that had to deal with that. So you should just, you know. And there's been like conflicting reports too because some sources are saying that Justin is has no is just trying to move forward, blah, blah, blah. And then there's other sources that say like his family is rocked by what has been coming out of Brittany's I mean, memoir. So it's I think that's like so dramatic to be like you're rocked. Like something that happened like twenty years ago. Like if you have this relationship, I mean it's wild, but it's not like if that's gonna like destroy your marriage on that. Yeah. Like I don't know. That's like dramatic, I feel. Yeah. And I wonder And maybe your marriage is already on the rocks if like they're gonna leave you over that, like something that happened twenty years ago. Do you think he would have told I mean, if you find out Brittany's writing a book, he must have told Jessica Beale. I would think, right? I don't know. It's like one of those things where it's like, do you disclose that to someone? I don't know. Like if you get married, like I had this like t- 10 years ago. I think if it, in that case, because it's so... If the book is coming out, you're saying yeah. if you know. But then you maybe you disclose too much. What if you disclose something that's not in the book? You're like, oh, <laughs> and looked- we did this and this and buried a body and they're just like, oh man, that wasn't in the book. <laughs> you just disclosed <laughs> like- too much. Sometimes saying less is more, yeah, you know? Yeah, like- But especially, I mean, Jessica Biel, what was she on Seventh Heaven? So she also was kind <laughs> of like a young star. Like she kind of grew up, you know, like a teen star. That's true. Kinda. So she... And, Especially, like, uh, early 2000s, like, teen star. Like, you definitely know Justin and Britney are, like, the couple, For you know? sure. For sure. Yeah. So. And I, Seventh Heaven was a wild set because that was, like, a movie, a show about, like, Christian people. But then the dad was, like, criminal. Oh, wait. In real life? Yeah. Or, didn't oh, you know? I didn't know that. Is he in prison now? He had, like, crazy accounts. I don't know. Yeah. And, like, that's wild. Like, that's so scary. Like, you're around children and you're, like, yeah. one of those people. I know. And it's like making a comeback on TikTok 7th Heaven. Like I see oh, no, all these no. like clips about it because I never watched the show. But I don't know. To me, I don't find it like an embarrassing thing, especially for her or for him. I mean, for anyone, like abortion is like a very like reasonable thing if like you both want it. But I think Brittany obviously has like regrets about it. And she's like dealing through this stuff. So I don't think it's like really like an embarrassing thing. It wasn't like it was during Jessica's time or whatever. It was before her time True. with a different relationship that has nothing to do with her. So like, it's definitely not embarrassing for her. Um, I don't even think it's going to be like that embarrassing for Justin other than like, I mean, I haven't read the full context of it. 
again, I think it's like Britney's story and people making it about themselves. It's kind of like weird. You know what I mean? And like, yeah, I don't know if it was like, if it was our situation, it's just like, okay, it happened before me. It was a long time ago. There's maybe a plethora of reasons why he didn't want to talk about it or to say it. Maybe, maybe he felt some type of hurt about it. Regret. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Cause it's like, a, that's like a trauma thing. And I imagine for a guy too, I don't know. I mean, I've never been through something like that, but it's like probably for a guy too, it's trauma. So maybe you just want to like not think about it and kind of like, I don't know. That's the only thing I can think about. What do you think about her kind of hinting that she's not going to return to music? (sighs) Oh, man. That's sad. That would be sad. I feel like – I feel like there's definitely like at least one more Britney album in her. I would love just like a final Britney album. Like almost Mm -hmm. like now that she said her piece, like she has the freedom to kind of really – express herself in music whatever way that she wants Mm -hmm. so i would love just like a final just like a way to end her like music career on like her way you know yeah i think it could happen i think maybe like in time after this like because she is her music is like her passion you can tell she loves it when she she performs she's so good maybe she doesn't have it now the passion but maybe it'll come back and i think it takes something in life to like make that come back but she's so good and every time she wrote she sat down the piano wrote it and like that's like one of her best songs of all time and it's just like wow like that's like what people want to hear and like all that stuff so I think so. I think there's like, I think there's hope. I think Brittany is light. I think she's coming back around. I think this is a big thing for her. And yeah, hopefully she just like finds herself and then she's 50 or 60 or whatever and makes another album, comes back around like Madonna, does a tour. And I want Gra- I want her to finally have her Grammys. Yeah. Like- oh, a thousand percent. There she is. She'll be like the comeback story. It's not like she went anywhere, but it's just like her performing at the Grammys or accepting all those Grammys. Like she's... She's almost like on the flowers. Yeah. (laughs) She's very untouchable. She's very that of like Michael Jackson. Like he had his last album invincible and it was just like, it's just like untouchable. Like there's just these people who are just so good at performing. It's like ungodly. It's like godly, you know, it's like, it's it's crazy. So, um, I think it'll happen. And if Brittany can get through that, then we can get through anything. That is actually so beautiful when you think about it. Yeah. She's the best. Brittany, we love you. And, um, the woman in me is out now. (laughs) It's at Target, unless it's all sold out because of the 9 million pre sold <laughs> sold. It's amazing. You guys, be kind. Oh, are you? Do you have the last words? Oh, you're just going to do a little it. wave? <laughs> Moses is ready to blast off. He has a little thing on. Thank you, of course, to my co host, Judge Dumbledore, <laughs> and my techie and my husband, uh, Buzz Aldrin. Someone said that's the only astronaut I know. So we'll see you next time. Just Trish. Bye.